Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode five of the No Limit Wrestling Show. I am, as always, Devon Murray, joined by my co-host, Zavi. Please introduce yourself, buddy. I am Zavi. I am just now getting over being sick for the past week, as I've complained to Dylan and Scott about for like three weeks, for like the entirety I've been sick. Forever. Yeah, just... <laughs> It, it hasn't been a fun time, but I'm almost over it. So if I sound a little stuffy, that's that's why. But other than that, I'm good. You're a sick guy. You're a sick guy, and that's okay. Um, and our our special guest for this week is my good friend, Widescreen. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us uh, kind of where your expertise is. Because I don't know if anybody else knows what these shows are, except for yeah. you. Not, not literally, but you get what I mean. Yeah, so I am at the moment just a twitter person um but my main specialty in terms of joshi well besides like current day stardom and stuff is the 2000s i think it's just i chose to fixate on that uh period because nobody else was and i think it's interesting (laughs) (laughs) i totally get that uh obviously we we spoke about arjian um in a, a couple episodes back, I think it was episode two, and then we talked about Yuma Kurihara. So this is actually like the third, like late 90s and 2000s kind of vibe for a, like the third show of a Joshi show. So that's kind of yeah. fun. Um, this is off topic, but I was just thinking about it. Uh, I, I do the Schmurder dance when that music plays at the beginning of the show. Like, <laughs> like I just yeah. realized, I was just like vibing. I was like, do you, it's crazy. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> do, you, do you throw your hat in the air? Oh, I, I wish I had a hat. I have, I have too much hair. I can't. If, wear yeah. if, you, if you had a hat, it would be I, yes, flying was. through the air right now. Yeah. Yeah. it would be gross. Now that now that now that you've sat here and talked about it, we do we have done a lot of Joshi on this. Well, I mean, <laughs> these are these are all my friends, and this is all me, and this is all you. Yeah, so it's like you know, that that's we'll what them. happens when you have a, a Joshi podcaster as a co-host. Yes, exactly. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Joshi. Friends. Which is funny because because Xavier's the one who suggested Arjun. Um, yes, and, I you know, was. You know. But yeah, we'll get to other non Joshi things eventually. But today we are here to talk about JD Star. We're actually here to talk about two um, episodes of JD Star Red Zone. I believe was their television show back in the day on Gear. Yeah, um, Red Zone is their TV show. Yes, I believe. Yeah, so that was what we watched. We watched. Uh, one show from December of 2002 and one show from January of 2003. So it mm-hmm. kind of follows like a similar, you know, it's, it's not too out of yeah. left field. Yeah. So is, um, it's the, a the continuation, big, if anything. Yeah. The through point is the junior tournament, which is happens on both shows. It's not much. There's not much to it. We'll obviously talk about it. But uh, that was kind of the through point where it's like, oh, let's watch the beginning of that and the end of that. And it's just two shows. And they're both like 50 minutes. So pretty easy to watch um widescreen can you tell us why you selected these shows specifically because obviously this was your choice uh, to yeah. watch. so i knew i wanted to expose you guys to jd star <laughs> because Exposed. it is a it is a wacky wild promotion especially in this time period there's a lot of just crazy spots and crazy match concepts going on mm-hmm. um and so these well, I had already seen on the show, I had seen the um, Nanamomo versus uh, Sumi and Megumi match, so I knew there was at least one hitter. <laughs> and I knew there, um, and like, I knew that LCO, you know, they're the patron saints of Lock and Brawl at this point. And so I knew that that would be a good, you know, brawl match. So I kind of picked this show out because I knew it would have some good stuff on it. And it'd be a good kind of entry point to the craziness that JD Starter had. You know, you, you bring up LCO being the like the great walk and brawl type wrestlers. I saw like a TikTok or something of a interview uh, with The Undertaker. And he said the scariest words he ever heard was Bruiser Brody saying, let's go for a walk. Um, and I think that's the same case with anybody who's ever wrestled LCO. Um, and I, I just thought about that. I listened to that yesterday. Yeah, but, especially especially at this uh, point in their career. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, the match against Tamakino is a couple years in the rear, or a couple years in the rear view mirror. So they're just doing walk and ball stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're just trying to hurt people at this point. Yeah. But uh, to get a little bit into JD Star, some stuff that I've researched, and obviously widescreen could help me out a little bit. I know, Xavier, have you seen any JD Star? If like at all or i don't know how much you've seen i can't remember what i've seen but i know i've seen at least a show or two okay um, not completely unaware of it. 
Oh, that's fair. Um, I, I've seen a couple matches here and there, same, but uh, most of that was from the late 90s when they were, like, starting and not, like, I, I've mostly seen from Jaguar Ikota era, which is why I was going to kind of get into. JD Star started along with many Joshi promotions that began in, like, the mid-90s, mid to late 90s, and it was initially headed by Jaguar Yokota, but she left wrestling for a few years in 1998. Yeah. Obviously, she eventually came back, and she is now wrestling still because she's a psychopath yeah, i believe she got <laughs> married and that would make sense she, that's why she dipped um yeah, she originally was, was it was built around her and former ajw talent um like uh, bison kimura i know was yeah. a big mm-hmm. star at the start of their promotion um yeah the stuff that i've seen was uh the yashiko tamora era like toward the end yeah um tamora i think comes in as kind of a guest in like 2000 2001 Mm -hmm. um at this point though all of the um former you know all of the big hitters from the age and so you're kind of coasting on the uh trainees they had so bloody and thanks to you're kind of dying out but just uh mike wise yeah, but okay, I, I can hear you now because of course I can. Um, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, so basically at this point, JD Star was kind of getting by on the rookies, and these were two rookie heavy shows, or not mm-hmm. rookie heavy, but you know, grown, self grown shows. Uh, eventually, JD Star does end up closing in 2007, and kind of a little bit of synchronicity here. Uh, the other half of the creation of Pro Wrestling Wave, M Style, was what we talked about in episode three, and Correct. today we're talking about. The other half of it, the more predominant half of it, which is JD, JD Star. Obviously, we're going to talk about Yumioka on the show. She was obviously one of the creators of Pro Wrestling Wave. So this was kind of the precursor to, you know, what Wave became and kind of mirrored M Style in that way. Obviously, JD Star is a bit more popular than than M Style ever was, but I thought that was a little yeah. interesting thing because we talked about M Style um, mm-hmm. with the Curry Hara show. So yeah. yeah. At this point, um, they were pretty far into. They had their third owner. Um, they were pretty <laughs> far into the um, what's called the Athres push. So they're trying to do um, just actresses bringing them in and trying to make them wrestlers, which would turn out to you know be the blueprint for success in the future. They're kind of ahead of their time in that. Um, but Oka is probably one of the two most notable people they ever produced the other of course being fuka who's a couple years from debuting at this point mm-hmm. or who would debut a couple years after these shows yeah i believe she debuted in 2005 maybe late 2004 oh, and this was four, i think yeah early 2003 so um yeah i mean there are a lot of people on these shows that i was not originally you know aware of and some wrestlers that i've seen new uh, just from like in passing, like Maru is still around in some way. We're going to talk about in the junior tournament. She's still yeah, around. That she a match she took a really long break and then just randomly came back next last yeah. year for actress. Um, um, uh, we just mentioned Fuka, and I'm going to make another Pure J. <laughs> uh, con- I'm gonna make, this is not actually a stardom connection, but I'm going to make another Pure J connection when we get later on so, into this show. But. Fuka was the inaugural inaugural POP Princess of Pro Wrestling champion, and that belt now belongs to Pure J and Che Orza uh, currently holds it. Yeah, oh, yeah that was yeah. A JD it was. Star belt, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a JD Star belt from 06 to 07, and then uh, it kind of just went everywhere before you yeah. know, finding J- itself in JWP and then Pure J and all that. No, JD, yeah, by the end, JD Star was like really carried by the rookies. They booked mm-hmm. like. Two of the most mental in terms of just like future star power rookie tournaments I've ever seen or I've ever like read about. <laughs> um, the it's 07 hard to see one, some of these hard to see some of these shows. <laughs> yeah, the the 07 like rookie league thing had like Io Shirai, Arisa Nakajima, Matsumoto, and um, oh man, uh, Nakamori just all in there <laughs> yeah if, if y'all haven't figured out the pop is like a rookie belt and the yeah. first two champions were fuka and natsuki tayo so yeah <laughs> a good start to a belt lineage yeah that's incredible i know it's, it's wild because like i guess sort of a precursor not really but kind of is the junior title that we will talk about uh today but getting into like the shows uh 
not into it, into it, but I, I'm going to ask what I usually ask. What were your overall positive and negative predictions? Why it's going to start with you. Um, I know you've seen some of these shows, but was there anything that going in, you were like, oh, that's going to be like this, or, oh, I'm, I'm interested to see how that's going to work. What, what were kind of, before you started watching the shows, what did you expect out of some of the matches? What did you want to see? What were you dreading? Uh, you know, yeah. all that stuff. So the stuff I was really kind of dreading was a lot of the undercard stuff. <laughs> Um, just because I knew that like a lot of people are really green, um, and it was gonna be clipped to hell anyways. But it's obviously you know pretty bad. Um, or <laughs> kind of just not bad, bad. There's some good stuff on here. I I said something positive about one of the matches, but you know there are some pretty green talents on here. Um, as for positives, I was really looking forward to the LCO match. I was. Um, like I said, I had seen the Sumi Nanamomo match. I was sitting on the LCO match until um, I watched it like a uh, week ago. So I was yeah. really excited for that one um, in particular. Yeah, I totally get that. Xavier, how about you? What were you looking at going into mm. this show? Yeah, so if you're new to listening to this what we like to do is like give our predicted match of the nights predicted words match of the nights and all that good jazz so i naturally asked dylan for the cards for these shows so i could you know do that before i start my actual notes and when i read the cards i was just like yeah i kind of see why this company shut down yeah, <laughs> and, it's in rough shape at certain points yeah well, yeah, yeah it's in it's in rough shape and sumi leaves like this yes. is yes. Yes. yeah last it's, thing I was this getting to that. Because, I was getting to that because I was just like, these cards don't look great. And then, like the first thing I said to Dylan was like, "Oh, the uh, Sumi and uh, Megumi versus Nana Momo match looks really good." And I was like, "Honestly, the Megumi and Sumi match also looks good." And then I was uh, watching the second show, and it was like, "Oh, it's uh, Sumi's last JD Star." I was like, "Oh my god, how does this company yeah. stay alive for like five more years?" <laughs> um, but. Um, my predicted match of the night uh, before, um, or match of the shows, I guess you want to say, is I predicted that Nana Momo versus uh, Megumi and Sumi was probably going to be the best thing from both shows. And uh, for predicted the worst match of the shows, I kind of kept my tradition whenever we watch something that's got like a battle royal or anything along those lines is I said probably one of these tournament matches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just pull the dice, take it. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. Uh, as for me, I I always liked seeing junior. Like I always liked seeing wrestlers I know now in their very early stages. Obviously, I, I was a big young lion guy growing up. Uh, as a teenager, I would watch all of the lions break type of stuff just to see as early as possible who's cool and who's not. Um, and obviously, with the with the young wrestlers in Joshi, that has become a thing as well. Where it's like I really invest early on on some of these wrestlers. Um, so I was super excited to see some of these wrestlers that I know, you know, like Yumioka, Apple Miyuki, who we talked about on that uh, Yumi Karahara show a little bit. Who I Things didn't are full circle. I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't remember that Apple Miyuki became Hibiscus Me, and everybody made fun of me for that. That was fun. Um, <laughs> but you know, I was I was kind of interested in that, but I also recognized that it could be really bad and you know i think i was kind of both right and wrong in that and then yeah i think i was the most interested in as a match the four-way lsd match which is a crazy name that's a great a name yeah and i was just yeah. like i want to know what the fuck that is I, I don't know if it's gonna be great but i want to know what that is and obviously yeah we'll, we'll LCO... talk a bit about L lsd matches yes. or yes, the so rule set for them later dylan we gotta bring that back when we bring back ours John. The LSD match. We're gonna, well, we're gonna bring LSD back high we're speed gonna league, <laughs> sky high LSD tournament. That's real. That, that's right. we <laughs> gotta get the the ghost of Trent Acid to make an appearance. It's gonna be great. Um, but but yeah, I thought that was gonna be great. And then obviously, you know, Sumi Sakai is good. I, I haven't seen a lot of her stuff in her prime in Japan, mm -hmm. so I was excited to see that and all that. Um, and then the negative predictions was that uh, I don't remember who. But somebody said that the bloody sucked. Somebody told me that at one point. Well, I got oh, news well, for they're, them. They're wrong. I know. I, I found that yeah, out. I got but, news for but them. I was like, I was like, oh, the bloody. It's like I've I've heard not great things about the bloody. Uh, and that was the main like negative. But otherwise, it's like, oh, I don't know some of these people, so I don't know how. I don't know what to expect. And also, the big thing, but the, my big negative point that I was like, oh, this might be bad, is 
this is 13 matches over two 50 minute shows so that's you know 100 minutes yeah an hour and so, a half uh, a lot of stuff's getting clipped yeah yeah so i was like i wonder how bad the clipping's going to be and that became a story of some of these shows but uh without further ado i think we're ready to just get into the the review section the meat of the shows if you guys don't have any other you know opening remarks before we get into it yeah i'm good i i am good all righty uh we're gonna start with the show from december 29th 2002 uh both the shows took place in cork and hall but this one was jd star the beginning of the end of the beginning 2002 great name that's the first thing i need to say great yeah. name for a year-end show that, that, yeah that. that's just the recurring year-end show yeah i i'm mm, that's awesome. now that's what i'm stealing when we revive ours yeah i'm stealing that from jd star you don't want to call it that. beginning of the end grand summer princess or something Grand Summer of Queen Cinderella Princess forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the top. You have to have the top at the end. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a great name. Uh, great attendance as well. This one had 1,585 people in Cork mm-hmm. and Hall, which was, as far as I'm aware, and, and widescreen, you know more about this than I do. I thought that was a really good number for O2 because from yeah. everything I've heard, post 01 attendances go down pretty much everywhere yeah. Uh, yeah at this point gaia is still drawing yes um uh jwp is like fully in the mud in <laughs> 02 and 03 like they're completely yeah. in the mud they're not yeah, running just... crooked at all wow um, to be that's... fair like in the next couple years as far as pro wrestling yeah. as a whole it's like noah's doing good and nobody else is yeah. and um <laughs> And AJW, like, they're going to say they're doing good. They're absolutely lying about their yeah, they're not Oh, 100%. Like, it is. <laughs> 100%. It is, yeah. There, there are shows from AJW from this time where they say they got 1,600. And, like, if you have that, they might, you might still be generous. They're, doing the, the they're doing the Dragon Gate numbers over there. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, I thought it was, like, a good number for the Joshi Dark Ages, so to speak. Um and you know the, that's a good the, number now in court yeah i mean yes but yeah, but that's what people, i mean is that it's like i didn't expect it to be so popular yeah people must have just showed out for lco that's probably yeah and that, that's the other thing is that it's like obviously oh, there I are mean, some yeah, stars yeah. obviously there are some stars but like relatively like linus asuka isn't wrestling on either of these shows which is like yeah kind of a big draw i mean she makes an appearance on the second yeah one. and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit but you know, and I was just like, oh, like for these match cars, for these wrestlers, I guess Simi Sakai might have, you know, her going away might have been a kind of a draw for a JD Star fan. But yeah, it was really yeah. interesting how well that number was. Um, getting into the show itself, uh, well, the, the TV show, the, the thing we were watching, the show intro was the most early 2000s visual I have ever seen. It had dirt bikes, nukes, explosions, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then JD Red Zone flashed on the screen and like this, like, you know, uh, I don't even know what, what type of font to call it, but you could barely read it. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. DX font. It was terrible. Um, and I was yeah. like, this is this is 2002 right here. Oh, oh yeah. We um unfortunately we didn't get a um a completely like no no concern for copyright you know Mm. song choice on here oh oh Um, yeah the uh jd star show that i watched in like 2007 with yoshiko yoshiko tomorrow it was like some rap song that was like there's no way they had the right to use um (laughs) oh four i know there's an oh four show i found where it opens with uh children of the corn by corn and ice cube (laughs) that's insane um there's one that uses dragula as an intro by rob zombie (laughs) like they just were spinning whatever Um, and sadly we didn't get any here but the music choices were always hitting the other thing that I missed was that the, the commercials were cut. I love old shows where the commercials are not cut. And so you just get a <laughs> glimpse of the time in Japan uh, yeah. of just like what's going on in the advertising. But yeah, that that intro was like 15 seconds of just chaos. And then immediately into the first match, like <laughs> middle of the first match, we were like three or four minutes into this eight minute match. Um, and that that first match was um, Obachi Iska versus Hiroya Muto. Um, Coming away from these two shows, I really liked Rui Muto, uh, mostly from her match on the next show, not so much on this one. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I think Obachi. Davey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let is, you go into this a little bit. I, I think Obachi Iska is the greatest wrestler of all time. <laughs> <laughs> every show, um, every show this happens, where it's Genba or it's Ron Maru, who's also on this show. Oh, Ron uh, is sick. We're gonna get to Ron Maru later, but um, but getting to the very little notes that I have for this, but um. This was like 
I had to like I had just woken up when I started watching this show. And I kind of had to rewatch. I had to rewatch this match because oh, I no. wasn't sure I saw what I saw. Um, but I, I did in fact see this match, and it's I give it five stars. It's definitely. Um, you know what? I might go generous and give it seven because it's definitely better than any Omega El Cotta match I've seen. So um, yeah, and, and uh, shorter too. Yeah. Much My first favorite part of this match is I just watched six people convince Hiroya Muto that she should stay down <laughs> while Obashi <laughs> attempts a sky twister press. <laughs> oh my god. That was so um, funny. No, and the, the best part was that so that's what that's the first spot. The first spot yeah. that we get to see is Iska on the top rope and Muto just sitting there, like on the ground, just like okay. And so missing the sky on. twister press, but it gets better as my notes tell. Oh yeah. Because after Muto moves, because She's not going to let her hit this move, duh. Yeah. Then Obachi scolds her because she moved and then tapes her down to the mat so yep. she can actually hit the sky twister press. I said, this is the wrestler of the century. Somebody please tell me that Obachi went on to become the JD Star Super United Grand Wonder Heavyweight Champion that's because so she's the GOAT, I'm afraid. <laughs> and that's the end of my notes. I think this match, what it what it told me is I realized where Hibiscus Me came from. Like, I, I get it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You know, where I was like, oh, this is, this is like, Hibiscus Me is still doing these sorts of bits. Where it's like, why are we fighting? Why are we fighting right now? We shouldn't be fighting. And then she just tries to roll you up. Uh, and yeah, I just thought it was, I thought it was really funny. Iska started hitting um, what me and my neighbor, who I used to, like, wrestle with when I was five, we would call that move the butt bomb. Uh, she hit that several times where she is like it wasn't oh, a bonsai I mean, drop. It wasn't a bonsai. It was like a cross between a bonsai and a senton. Yeah. So I was called it the butt bomb. She hit that like eight times and then Muto kicked her and hit her. Crowd hit it a couple times and, yeah. and won. And uh, her. Yeah. You would have thought KG Muto hit a shining wizard for how the crowd reacted for the butt bomb. Oh yeah. <laughs> and 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 widescreen, uh <laughs> you were you were nervous about the, the opening types of matches. How how were you feeling about Ibachi Iska? Um, I mean, she she was funny. Um, this is a lot of talking, which you know. Yes. It's it's like, it's probably the comedy that's the hardest to just absorb as a as a you know person who doesn't speak Japanese watching a match. But I felt like you know it reads fine, or it, or at least it read fine. I got what was going on, and so it was it was pretty funny. You know the couple of bits they did. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Offensive. I mean, I as the one person who's not sick of Fukigen death yet, I can you know <laughs> say that you know it was it was a fun it was a funny little match. So yeah, I, I thought it was it was fine. You know, what I mean, like it was it was a fun little thing. Um, and that was the last match before the undercard gets taken over by the JD Junior Title Tournament. Uh, the first round, the first match of the first round. Uh, was Keiko Saito versus Maru. Maru ended up winning. Um, yeah, how, how do we feel about this match? The, these junior title matches, the biggest issue was how badly they were cut. So, mm-hmm. like, oh, when, yeah. you would cut, when you would see something This cool, one especially, because I, I think thought Maru, this one was, like, the best of the first round, and it was getting, like, good. Yeah, I, mean, I, I felt like half this was the match best away. of the... Yeah, I felt like this one was the best of the tournament, just from what I saw. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think Maru couldn't. especially was like the rest of that was like, oh, like you, I could tell she's having good matches here, but I just like, I'm not seeing them, you know, because it's this one was two and a half minutes of eight minutes. That's what we got to see. Yeah. Uh, which I think if, both of them were really good in this one and they both have a good look to them too. So, yeah, there's some, there's some clean looking uh, DDTs and stuff, which are always, you know, dodgy when you, when it comes to rookies. <laughs> I mean, stylistically, I, I will say, I think. Uh, Keiko Saito makes way more sense for being an actress girl regular nowadays. Uh, so it's kind of funny that Maru of, of these two ended up in actress now. Uh, I think Keiko's just retired. Um, but yeah, I thought this was like a really fun for what we got to see. The finish was cool. Uh, Maru, oh, yeah, the stretch muffler was nasty. And it yeah, was so was, such a cool setup nasty. for it, too. Where it was like, nasty. it looked like she was doing a B driver, but it turns out she was just doing that to trap the other mm-hmm. leg. And then she got the stretch muffler. I was like, oh, that's. Somebody needs to steal that. Like that's dope. I like that. So yeah, there's a lot of things on these show, uh, shows. I need people to steal. Yeah, oh, there, yeah 100%. there are a couple things. Yeah, that I've specifically put down in my notes. You know, somebody, a, s- certain wrestlers need to steal these. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have one. I know on the second show for sure that I have attached names to. 
Yeah, and there's and there are some match or and there are some moves that have been stolen in these shows, uh, or or that are in these shows that have already been stolen. Uh, shout out Soriano, who <laughs> uses um, she uses the bloodies uh submission. The bloody X. That, yeah. yeah, the bloody X. That's that's her thing now. Which is sick, by the way. Um, but yeah, I thought this match was like a good uh, rookie showcase. I think they both did well. Um, and it was, like like White Screen said, it was probably one of the better, you know, one of the better matches in it's this the, tournament. It's the only one of the tournament where I have, like, in-depth, like, note had, like, in-depth notes where I was like, oh, I was, like, really having a good time. The rest, I was just like, okay, cool. Yeah. I would say this one and the other Maru match were, were the two for me. Mm-hmm. Um, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, yeah, next up is another first round matchup. It is Apple Miyuki versus Akane Kokume. Kokume? Kokume. Yeah. Um, this this is unfortunate because I saw I saw Akane and I was like, she did the double jump arm drag, right? And I was like, oh, that this this girl has some. This match ended up going two minutes. Uh, <laughs> so it was like, you know, didn't get to see much more. Hey, of that. Hey. She, she retired <laughs> like six months later. Um, yeah. And I was like, damn, like, I, I was like, oh, wow, that was kind of clean. That was kind of sick. I, I think she has something. And then she's, she dipped. But, uh, uh any, any hibiscus, me, hibiscus me invented the final cut in this match. The apple buster. Oh, yeah. The, the eye of the hurricane. The apple yeah. of her eye. That, that's yeah. real. Um, wide screen, how did you feel about, uh, young apple Miyuki, young hibiscus me? I mean, yeah. The, the thing that stands out in my notes for this match are nothing offensively bad. Yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. just what I thought about it. It was it was it was an all right match, you know. There's nothing that was like there was there were no like really horrendous botches or anything, which is kinda all you can ask for. Totally. Um, um No, I, I agree. Like like I said, ended with the eye of the hurricane, which mm-hmm. Ab Miyuki put some stank on that and then the pin, she was like, Yeah, I'm 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 beating you, motherfucker. Like Okay, great. so I'm not crazy looking at my notes. There was definitely somebody who was in the semifinals of this tournament that did not have a yes. match on the show. Yes, we're, we're <laughs> okay. That. We're and that. That's fine. That's fine. Because I looked, it was I go. looked through cage match. Was I was like, was Are fine. there any shows where like this could have happened? And it's just no. But we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to it's that. Fine. Um, she got a buy. Yeah, fine. she got a buy. But yeah, you know, as much as we um Apple Miyuki looks nothing like a biscuit meat uh yeah, by the way yeah. like she eventually like a couple years later i was like okay i could see like she looks different but i can see it i if you told me that was somebody that was not a biscuit me i would not have questioned you whatsoever um uh, but yeah. it wasn't a biscuit me damn that's crazy i wonder who it was, was. Hiromu takahashi oh wasn't that wasn't he like 14 <laughs> like, yeah if <laughs> even not that. even I mean, um he's not that old <laughs> joshi's no stranger to hiring 14 year that's true so that's so, true you know. uh but next Can't match is now. another familiar face for many uh modern joshi wa- watchers it is another jd jr turner to the, the words jd <laughs> jr title tournament it is yumioka versus mizuho ishikawa yeah that, that's how you pronounce your name um ishikawa felt like she had something to her like she felt like they were kind of putting her over and like kind of like giving her a little bit of shine. They showed her entrance. It was the yeah. only match that they showed her entrance. Ish- Ishikawa was um, an MMA import. Yeah. Um, and she had a lot of the MMA import problems, at least early on, where it's like yes. she's pulling her punches looked really bad because when you know how to punch people for real, you can't really like nobody who punches people for real knows how to fake a punch. Yeah. The, the phone kickboxing was really rough. You could tell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the but thing is, if she did a hip. good one, we, you could tell she was going to like lay somebody out. So yeah, <laughs> she was looking like the best pure striker in WWE in this match. I'll tell you that right now. Big Shane yeah. McMahon vibes from yeah. her. Um, Dog, you... <laughs> she, it, when she started throwing them punches, I was like, this just gives me like flat, like terrible war flashbacks to Keisuke Okuda's Dragon Gate run, where he was just doing oh, this I, terrible. I MMA used to gimmick. love Okuda. He had a good view bad. with Kaito Yoshida, and then like every match he had after this, it was like, all right, bro, we're, we're done with this. <laughs> um, but um, Yumioka didn't do any of the big boots in that depressed boot. That was, so I guess, yeah, so, was, I, so I guess she hadn't figured out the psychology to this. Was pre big boot, this was her only doing terrible looking judo throws because she did, yeah, judo. The, the judo throws were rough. Her judo yeah. era, we do not, yeah. we did not, yeah. do that. they look, a, they look especially hey, rough when you've got like. 
Megumi they, the yeah, I was about to part. say that. I was like, <laughs> Megumi does some like nasty ones over yeah. these two shows. So yeah, it looks pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I in my notes, I just have that uh, this is starting to become definitely one of the matches I have seen. Uh, they eventually just clip the match to a point of where it's like near the end, and Yumi pulls out all like most of it. it's the start of what her signature offense would be, but not everything, and not. And all of this ends up looking way better in the future, like the butterfly suplexes, the uh, springboard elbow, like all that, you know, gets refined and looks a lot better. But in its infancy, it was fine. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was fine. That's all I can really say about it. Yeah, it was one of the matches of all time. Oh, yeah, she was sure. only like, uh, she was only like one and a half years in here. Mm-hmm. She was that far in? I, I thought she was only a few months in. But, yeah, no, you know, um, looking sense. at Cage Match says debuted August of 2001. Yeah, so okay. a year and a couple months. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. I mean, I guess, sense. you know, Joshi wrestlers kind of develop at different rates. But yeah, I mean, this match was the only one that of this opening round of the tournament that we like saw a reasonable amount. Like you could kind yeah. of, the whole match formed, even if it mm-hmm. did get cut. Um, so in that regard, it was like not bad, but I... Like I said, I would have much rather seen like the yeah, Saito I, I, match a uh, bit more f- fleshed out than this one. I, I would have traded this in for more of the Maru match. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. Easily. Um, but from there is when we start the uh, the top of the card that is the end of the first round of the JD Star oh, Junior yeah. Tournament. Um, and this is where we get to uh, one of the best matches, if not, I think for me, the best match of oh, these definitely. two shows right. um, is Sumi Sakai versus Megumi y- Yabushita. Uh, this went to 20 minutes. It was a draw. These two tag team partners, I, I had their team name somewhere, but it's not in my notes anymore. Uh, I think it's like, like Yabusaka. I think it's yeah. like Sumi Gumi or Sumi something. Sumi Gumi, Yabusaka, you know how it is. Yeah. Uh, but they're a tag team. This is one of Sumi Sakai's last appearances for JD Star, so they gave her, her, her teammate in the singles match, and I just thought this was so good. Uh, Why I'm going to mm-hmm. start with you. Um, how did you feel about this match? Obviously, I, I, have you seen this before? This, this uh, recent viewing. This one I had not seen. Um, I had seen a couple of other Sumi versus Yabushita matches, um, and they're always like really hard on just technical stuff. Because um, I mean, the, uh, Sumi's background is judo, and Gumi is like uber high level judo yeah um so like i don't we can we can get into this is like yabushita is like uh maybe only behind kandori in terms of uh like level of judo uh coming into joshi she was like a world champion or something wasn't she um she was a national champion yeah she was a national champion and plays top five in two different international tournaments yeah yeah, so that, like, that is she's very high up. Really, sure. really good at judo. Because <laughs> a lot of a lot of, and we see this a lot nowadays. A lot of judokas, uh, if they become pro wrestlers, they become pro wrestlers young. So, you know, judo, or or they're like you, right? Where like you was a yeah. a under twenty three, uh, all Japan champion, I believe, or an under mm-hmm. twenty, something like that. Uh, but then once she kind of fell out of love with judo and she found wrestling eventually. Um, or refound wrestling eventually she became you know she used her judo but she's not a judo wrestler uh you don't immediately think of you and think of judo whereas with somebody like megumi yabushti or yabushti damn that was so wrong yeah yabushta (laughs) um she was great like i think her judo really complimented her in-ring style uh zavi how about you get in get us into this match a little bit um because it was really good and i think we all agree on that oh yeah for sure like it's it might be my favorite. I have to see by the time we get to the end. But um, uh, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, though. It really caught me off guard. But uh, I said they're kind of cooking here for a minute. Tommy is fitted crazy here. All oh, white yeah. joints. Tommy's just... fit is great. That's a specific note in mine, too. Yeah, yeah, it literally to... says Tommy is dripped out. Shout out to <laughs> GOAT ref Tommy Ran. Um, I, I've seen her. Res- I've seen her referee in every single decade since the 1980s. That's uh, at least once. I've seen a match of, of hers, you know, because she's in the original JWP and she was in, I believe, regular JWP and then she was in a bunch of stuff and now she's done it. I, I've, she's just so legendary. But go on, Xavier. Uh I love Sumi's little baseball slide into the head scissors takedown yeah. on the outside. That was like so smooth. Uh, 
there's probably not a lot of people that can do it that fluently, uh, but there's definitely people out there that could, and they should. Um, Yabushita did like a really gorgeous springboard topic on Hilo. It was like so fluid. It, it was just so pretty. The way she hit that, like because yeah. she hit it in the in the second show too. I just like kept watching because I it's was like, like she didn't do like a like clear like lucha tope con hilo it's like if you were trying to do the swanton on like a trampoline yeah, yeah. like it, it it looks like she floats in the air yeah you know what i mean and it's just like so like it just doesn't it looks like so unique and so strange because it's so crisp it's so clean um it's it's amazing i love that spot yeah uh moonsault miss from sumi followed by the northern lights from yabushita or yabushita um i watched too much joshi because three times i thought we were about to see the casador into the foot stomp because they kept <laughs> on doing casador, yeah. casador pins and i was like oh they're about to do the foot stomp and it just didn't happen uh and uh, we're, we're we're too yeah. early in the development of high speed wrestling for that to be a thing yeah it's coming though it's fine yeah. we'll get there and everybody will do it it's fine uh uh, Yabushita with a slick transition into the cross arm breaker. Like she didn't do, it's like she did like the, I guess kind of like the menorah special, but she did a front flip with it instead of going the other way. It, it was a really nice transition. I loved it. Um, but that was directly after Sumi couldn't finish the match with our fisherman buster. And then right after that, they went to the draw and it was just excellent stuff. I have no complaints about this match, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was really, really good. Um, you have a lot of really good high speed stuff in the beginning, um, and then you get down to like really, um, really technical stuff. Sumi pulled a um, an arm bar, f- or no, Megumi did. She pulled an arm bar from a bridging Northern Lights pin. Yeah, which I didn't know you could do. <laughs> um, I was I was unaware that you could physically like get an arm bar from that position but she did it and then you have like yeah really good um action um running up to, or just really frantic action as they try to pin each other before the before the end yeah you, you both talked a lot about the great second half but i also really liked the first half because the way the star was they had a really great opening exchange was high speeds exchange and it ended in a stalemate and then uh one spot that I just really liked, one like just like visual, was Megumi staying on the ground and being like, "Okay, let's wrestle down here," and then, and then Sumi Sumi climbing up the to the top rope, and I was like, "No, nah, let's wrestle up here." And that was like such a great way to establish that dynamic because you could tell they're very, you know, even if you've never seen them wrestle before, you've never seen them tag before, you could tell they're very familiar with each other, but they both have very differing styles, mm-hmm. uh, even though they both fl- like mesh so well. Uh, and I think that was just kind and of it's like it's not like they can't well. do each other's style. It's just mm-hmm. they know that it'd be you know going into a losing battle trying to play the other one's game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think I think this entire match it, it weaved in the techers and the and the high speed stuff super well, way better than I even expected it to. Um, like I said, this is one of the first you know prime Suki or Sakai, Jesus. I'm I'm getting all over the place with you, names. You can't today. words today. No, yeah. I'm not. It's bad. It's 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 past it's past five p.m. I, I'm I'm checked out. But no, Sumi Sakai. I've, I haven't seen a bunch of her in her prime, especially in Japan. Hmm. So this was like a treat. I love this, and also some of the like other more cute spots with the seconds. Right, I think the seconds that were around the ring. Um, Sumi Sakai tried to run away, and all the seconds dragged her back. <laughs> like, like she she ran around Cork and, and then she's like out of view. For Apparently, her, for in this second. company, it's just legal for all the seconds to interfere in every like match. Are, oh, it it one thousand percent is. It's yeah. encouraged that they oh, do. 100%. You know, it's them getting reps in, brother. Come on now. Um, but yeah, so so she like disappears from view for a second, and then you see all the seconds dragging her back in the ring, and then they throw Sumi back in the ring, and then. Those seconds turn on Megumi, and they all do a corner rush. They try to get Tommy to do the corner rush. She refuses to. And then they get into, like, the actual... Oh, wait, no. There was one more second spot. Uh, <laughs> they got into the leg spot. They got into the leg lock. And all the seconds just got in and started doing diving attacks on Sumi. And then... Uh, who, who was it? It was Muto came in and just headbutted her. <laughs> cool. and then just dipped. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's so great. You know, it's Sumi's last singles match, so everybody has got to get their get their parting shots in. Uh, I, I love those. I love before those she so dips. Much. Yeah. And yeah, I just thought this match was great. Like you said, the Megumi transitions into the armbar were great. 
the Sumi high speed stuff, the dueling roll ups, everything was so good. This was such a good match. Um, the crowd, this was the match that I kind of realized that the crowd wasn't as like hype as I might have expected them to be, just in general. Because um, mm-hmm. I felt like this was like the most hype match it could be. Obviously, the main event was like chaos, and I think that was a different type, but this is the most like straight singles hype you can get. And I was just like, oh, I thought they might have been a bit more excited, a bit more, you know, mm-hmm. popping for things, but they, they kind of weren't. That was kind of the big, the only downfall of this match, I think, was the crowd wasn't as hyped for it as I kind of expected it to be. But, you know, can't blame them. Yeah. But I, I believe that is all on that match. Great match. I, I highly mm-hmm. suggest it to anybody. Um, I don't know where I would be able to find it. It's it's kind of I shows have... are hard. Yeah. Yeah. It, I've, it, it, it are, <laughs> they are private videos on my youtube channel um so we can maybe put the links in the description yeah hopefully. yeah you know what yeah, yeah the, the links to both these shows will be in the description um this is obviously on the the first show so you should definitely go check this out because this match specifically really really great definitely right yeah it. yeah um another note i had this is just an observation i've had about sumi is that she has like the only moonsault that is comparable in terms of angle to Io Shirai's that I've seen. For sure. I can see that. I can Which see is that. like, I, I often like talk about like, Io jumps out instead <laughs> of jumping up for her moonsault, and Sumi's is like very similar to that. And it, she's the only other person I've seen do the moonsault like that, which is really I think, I think angles on diving moves are really interesting i know this always happens every episode where it's just like one random tangent about wrestling moves uh but i'm a big nerd about this sort of thing i think angles on diving moves are really interesting because i think moonsaults are a bit more unique of fewer people do it and fewer people do it different ways there are only a couple ways to do a moonsault but the way i see it is with foot stops where it's like you'll have a a caro ito ito fuck i shouldn't have hosted today this is rough um you see a Kaoru Ito uh, foot stop, and it's like she sticks the landing as hard as possible. Whereas somebody like Azumi, it's more of like a drop kick to a down yeah. opponent. A- Azumi takes it all on her knees. It is so Yeah, bad either, either she... And, and that's another thing, is that it's like there are Azumi ones, or there are other ones where it's like she breaks over it. So it's like if yeah. she overextends, she'll just break onto her knees. But if she underextends, she'll like drop kick them. I think that's yeah, really no. interesting. There's also a spot in the main event of the second show where it looks like she's doing a missile drop kick but she's actually doing a mushroom stomp and it's like there, there are just so many intricacies to these dives that i really really like i don't think people appreciate them enough but that that's a smart note about the a smart comparison with eo and sumi sakai because i could definitely see it um and then on to a match that i probably i would not recommend it is the twf world women's tag team championship match is kazuki and sachi Abe versus Renmaru and Tsunami. Uh, <coughs> Kazuki and Sachi Abe are the tag team champions, and they retain in this match. Um, Xavier, this is a little fun fact for you. I, oh, I no, I already have it in my notes. I already know what you're going to say, man. You do? Yeah. At Damn. least I think so. Well, this is a fun fact for everybody then. So I, I don't know who Tsunami is. I had no idea. So I looked her up a little bit, and I found out that two weeks prior to this match, she oh, no, tagged... no, no, it's not that. Yeah, no, it's, it's something else. And listen up, listen up. Two weeks before this match, December 12th, Tsunami competed in the Twins of Arjian Tag Team Tournament uh-huh. in 2002. And Arjian her partner... Really washed, yeah. Yes, and her partner <laughs> was none other than the great Jesse Bennett, Bionic J. Yes, sir! We're here! We're here! Gotta, gotta get the reference out, because Jesse Bennett, known... Uh, very famous for her very bad performance in a three-way match before the Yards Tournament of 1998. If you go on here a little bit more about that, go check out episode two of the No Limit Wrestling Show. Um, this match itself was not good. It, 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 I, I didn't like it. Come Ren on, Maru was I got cool. a lot of notes for this. Come Ron on. Rue was dope. I, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go to widescreen first. I'm going to go to widescreen first. Ren Rue was dope. Other than that, yeah, my oh. my only note for this is that Ron Maru hard carried this match. Like, Listen. Listen. <laughs> Talk to us, Avi. Talk yeah, to us. Yeah. The first half of my notes is not even about this match. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the graphic, I, I wanted to point this out because you know uh, th- this is 
my time to shine. Uh, the graphic said that Abe and Kazuki were representing Wanted, which popped me because Wanted is still around and it is in current day Pure J, but it is Kazuki, Raiden Hagane, and the best Momo in wrestling, Momo Tani. So that popped me. Uh, and that was like the first half of my notes. <laughs> um, uh, no Limit Wrestling Show icon Ran Maru is here. Abe almost breaks her leg when her and Kazuki do the catapult drop kick. Uh, Ran Maru comes in and like, yeah, she just carries this match. Um, incredible that we witnessed work rate Ran Maru and then also time freezing Ran Maru. Um, it's crazy uh, that Wanted is just Kazuki and whoever her homie is. At yeah, any given time. exactly. <laughs> like I'm looking into that. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have an all cap shining wizard pro wrestle love wins. I said match was really, really weird because yeah, there was yeah. a few things that I like, but you know, for the most part, it was bad. Yeah. Uh, Ranmaru shine though, and I texted Dylan because I was at Firestone down the street getting uh, an alignment on my car, and I texted Dylan because I was watching this while I was waiting, and I was just like. Tsunami makes Ami Sare look like 2017 G1 Tetsuya Naito. Like, yeah. this is top insane. of the game. Top of the game, Ami Sare is <laughs> compared to Tsunami. Yeah, Tsunami is Tsunami is rough, and that um that Jesse Bennett team must be like watching paint dry. Like, we well, gotta watch that. Dude. Like, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, oh, we gotta no. find that. We do we not watch Arjun past 2001. That's, gotta, that's, uh, no, come that's on. the no man's land. That's no man's land right there. Um, I, I do. I don't remember who they wrestled, but I'm kind of interested because why, why am I looking at it like this? Hold on, I'm I'm gonna find it because I want to know. I know they lost in the first round, uh, but their oh, opponent I hope it was Lady Metal with the taunt. Their opponent was Lioness Asuka and and Reina Takase. So okay, that's so, that yeah, had baby baby Leon with no mask and yeah. way too old Lioness at that point. That. That she had a, y'all yeah. come on. That would have went. That was crazy. Crowd was probably rocking for that one. I mean, yeah the the crowd is it's it's a crush gal. So, well, let's let's let's. That was probably let's five see. stars. Eleven hundred, eleven hundred in Corkin. I mean, maybe. Uh, okay, maybe we <laughs> well, do need five. to watch the show. No, well, you want to know what the first? You want to know what the first team that I see on this uh, Twin Star Cup of two thousand two? What? Want to know what Wasn't the first Tiga team is in this one? Uh, it's Gami and Shark Tsuchiya winning the oh, first no. round. Let's go! We Bro, gotta watch. 2000, 2000, Shark Tsuchiya was never a good wrestler. I love her. I love her to death. She's one like she's one of my favorite bad wrestlers. Yeah. She was never a good wrestler. Yeah. Post FMW, she like just post- had she just had the luxury of being one of the like only two women in FMW and yeah. being with Megumi Kudo. That's yeah. I, but but even so, like Gur and Tai was a cool angle. Post that, no, <laughs> she should not be a thing. And oh. Gami in 2002, yeah, that's dog I was, shit. I was gonna say for 2002, <laughs> we are rapidly approaching Gami not caring anymore. Oh yeah. Oh I no, mean, we've already watched yeah. Gami have a ne- negative vertical on a footstool. Yeah, that, um, that was 2010, though. To be fair, yeah, yeah. So there's an O, th- something like that. There's an O three match where like it's like her. Um, Leon and Yonayama, and like Yonayama's setting up to dive in the outside, and like Gami is just sat down in in the front row of chairs, and the ref has to go get her and move her to catch. <laughs> Love it. it yeah, is, she. It is, I think uh, I think name change was when Gami actively yeah. started being worse because like Makiko Futagami is a goat. Mm-hmm. Like that's a dog. Dog. It's, different. it's two different eras. It's different era, boom boom, for, for real. Um, yeah. But yeah, back to this match. Um, not good. Kazuki and Sachiabe uh, actively poor. Um, Tsunami was in over her head, and Ranmaru is awesome. Let's be real. Yeah. My dope. my only other note on this match is that uh, Sayabusa needs to steal that like um, flip to the outside that Ranmaru did, where she like is going for like the standard moonsault dive to the outside that everybody does. Oh, yeah, and she does the tumble twist and, like, two-gold yeah. Scorpio. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kamatani should steal that. Um, More people should steal Red Maru, uh both, like, physically and comedy-wise, because she's great. Red yeah, no, great. Um, 
Natsu, Natsu Poi already stole from her. She did a fairy blink on Chris Hero in that one match. That's true. <laughs> Ranmu versus Chris Hero, that's real. Or Kings of Wrestling versus Ranmu and uh, Saki Sky. Sumi Sky. I hate myself. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the main event because I don't want to talk about that match no more. Um, the main event is... Be easy. Be easy. The main event of the evening is Fang Suzuki and the Bloody... Ah, 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 ah. It is versus... the Holy War. Come on. Yeah, uh, it's the Holy, Holy War in all caps. Holy War versus Itsuko Mita and Mima Shimoda of LCO. Um, Fang Suzuki immediately, it's funny we just mentioned her, immediately gave me Shark, Shark Tsuchiya vibes. That's immediately what oh, I saw. Oh, 100%. And then I looked it up, and they wrestled and tagged together, like, multiple times uh, around this period. You know, earlier. that's what I was thinking. I was like, you know what? She kind of looks cool, but she's not very good. <laughs> the vibe is there. I think that's the important thing. And that's the, That was the important thing with the Mad Dog Military and Gurantai, too, is that it's like, the vibe's there. Yeah, the vibe's the, there. The she lariats people I don't pretty have, hard. I don't have anything for the bloody in this one, just because this match was just like, whatever to me, but the bloody sick. Oh, no. I'll, mm. tell, I'll tell you why later. But There's, there's something. It's 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 at the bloody's expense, so it's not about the bloody. But the match is crazy. The match starts immediately chaos. And it's just chaotic. Yeah. Uh, at one we point, we are now like, in the era where all LCO will do is like wild brawls. This is like yeah, yeah. Like, Count out. Mima speed. hasn't pieced off to Mexico yet. Like she's here, she's doing brawls. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And the 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 great thing about LCO as well is that they uh they hurt people. So yeah. to start this match, it was chaos. They were like all brawling, whatever. Um, Mima Shimoda, or no, yeah, Mima Shimoda and Bloody were like kind of like in a submission together, whatever. Tsuko Mita comes in and knocks out the Bloody with a kick to the head. <laughs> to the point where, and this is what we were talking about earlier with the seconds, to the point that the Bloody was out for like a couple minutes and Sachi Abe had to, <laughs> had to start beefing. One of the seconds had to start beefing with Atsuko Mita so that, like, the bloody could, like, not be dead. Anymore. Regain consciousness. Yeah, because you could see, you could see the moment that Atsuko Mita knocked her out. She just kicked her in the head and knocked listen, her out. Listen, listen, okay. I, I just want to preface this before, like, we go any further. LCO are probably sweethearts. I have never seen anybody say a bad thing about either one of them. Mima Shimoda is like the most beloved wrestler in all of New Japan. She's the mother of, of like Kira everybody wrestling. that goes to Mexico loves it. Escamita because she was like their mom in Mexico. Yeah, but you have to preference that they hit people very very hard, <laughs> and they they don't they don't they don't lay laid in salt for anybody. So everybody's yeah, getting yeah, they're, everybody's getting it. So this wasn't like she hated her. It's just that Escamita. That's she, just business. She, that's, yeah. that's just how it works. This is how she earns her check. That, that's just never mind. Uh, I was gonna call them by their English translation, but I was like, yeah, that's gonna sound bad if you like clip it, so I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then so like I said, Abe ended up attacking Mita. She dragged her into a dark hallway <laughs> on like the outskirts of Gorkin, and the there apparently there was only one cameraman because he was running chasing the scene <laughs> like he was running with the camera trying to catch up and then you just like he just finds itsuko mita just laying in a dark hallway as abe's running away it's like what the yeah. fuck just happened there yeah um, and then it cut and then it cut and got back to the ring yeah it's the type of match where you kind of don't really notice when clips are just because there's so much happening yeah the, the only reason i knew there was a clip uh there's a clip was when uh was when the bloody was just conscious again like <laughs> just sporadically she's just awake again um and yeah so from there a lot of stuff happens it was chaos um Zavi, do you have any like mid match notes do you have any you know spot notes of this match um well cuz i only have oh, one more i only have uh, one more and it's, i uh, I only have one note, and I said, "Well, when you when I give you the list of all the LCO classics, I would recommend this match is definitely not making the list." <laughs> That's all I got. That that I is liked fair. Um, I liked it for what it was. I thought yeah. it was fun. Well, yeah, play. I. It was I a liked, good blunder. Okay, let LCO yeah. do their stuff and all that. Yeah, I I liked it, but you know, LCO versus Hamakino, this was not. No. You know. no. <laughs> Was it trying so. to be? I, maybe it, it was. It was trying to be something. I don't know. It was interesting. I liked it. Um, yeah. Bitch slap into STO 
was a banger combo from Bloody and Fang from Holy War. Because uh, mm-hmm. Bloody just crazy with the slap, and then the STO was clean. Um, one funny thing that I just, like, I don't know why it made me laugh so hard, was that the the TV schedule started playing over the finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, things are happening, and I cannot see them. Yeah, no, they, <laughs> they, showed, they showed, like, um, the TV schedule as Fang was getting hit off of a ladder by a missile yeah. dropkick. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then uh, it took me to Big Dicter. Um, she she actually she did it. Started twice. she started or, hitting her with yeah. everything, and then refused to pin her like four times. Yeah, she she pulled her up twice. Yeah, and then they're fighting a little bit, and then Mita's just like, okay, it's over, and she's forearmed her in the head, and high stacked her, and won. Um, yeah, I love chaotic LCO matches. Like I I don't care if they're like great or if they're fine or like it's just fun. And this was fun. I liked this. I thought it was good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you want to see a high class LCO brawl of this era, this this ain't <laughs> this ain't the yeah. one. This ain't the go to, in my opinion. Oh, it was good though. Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe that is the end of that show. Yes, yeah. that is. So top to bottom, a show that happened that had a really great uh, single yeah, match with Sims Sky. Yeah, and the, the show. yeah, like, um, go ahead. yeah. Yeah, no, like like I said, I did not pick shows that were like great top to bottom, but <laughs> they had they had they had their moments. They had know. soul. They had the soul of JD Star in these, yeah. these shows. Yeah, they, um, they had moments. So let's let's just get right into the second show. Let's waste no time. Uh, the second show was JD Star No Holds Bar 2003. This is their first Corkin of the year. It took place on January 13, 2003. Believe it or not, ten days before I was born this show mm. took place. So uh, when Linus Asuka vacated the TWF World Championship, World Women's Championship, I was not alive yet. I was I was still in the womb. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. Um, I've never had thoughts of either of those. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, the, the way this show started off, again, with a really cool show intro, and then immediately cut to Linus Asuka vacating the TWF World Women's Championship. Uh, widescreen, you could tell me a little bit more about this because I looked it up. Wasn't because of injury. She wrestled on her Arjun show two days later. So, um, <laughs> probably so, yeah, she was that just case of, She was just. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. going to say maybe she's got that case of I am not losing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The right. TWF title. I can't remember if it's actually their top title, um, or if it's the Queen of the Ring title. Title is their number one title. You know, I was wondering the same thing because I did just see Fang Suzuki, who turns out to be the Queen of the Ring champion, uh, get big. <laughs> big dick by Atsuko Mita. So I was like, oh, maybe maybe that's not the top belt. Yeah. Um, well, since it's on Linus Asuka, I would assume it'd be the top belt. So and the, I'm pretty the, sure the last the, TWF the, champion is uh, Tamora. So. It is. Yeah, Tamora took it from, like, Bloody, I think. Yes. Um, yes. So, so the thing with the TWF belts were that they were both created in CMLL, um, mm. as most belts are. <laughs> and, and they... Um, Linus Asuka won one of them, or, or yeah, won the, the the main championship and took it to JD, JD Star and just never gave it back. Um, okay. And so, like, looking at it early on, it definitely looks like that's the top belt. You know, it was traded between Jaguar Yakota and Linus Asuka, and Kyoko Inoue eventually had it. Um, and then, yeah, around this time is when it just stopped being defended. I th- looking, looking at Cage Match, obviously, Cage Match doesn't have a lot of uh, details, but like Linus Asuka just stopped defending it for a few years. <laughs> well, yeah, that's also when um, that's cage match, but yeah. that's also the great um, JD Star cage match uh, <laughs> void of oh one of two thousand and oh one. Yeah, I think that's the big disappointment from from these shows is that you didn't pick a show with the cage match because Joshi cage match sounds fucking insane. Um, yeah, but... um, yeah, it was it was between this or the all cage match show. Um, <laughs> Oh my I god, can... they ran TNA lockdown? Hell yeah. Uh yeah, so I can explain this to you. Um I've explained this to Dylan. They have this um special cage. It's called a metal garage. Um <laughs> it's like a hell in a cell, but there is a little like cutout in one of the corners that you can climb through. So escape rules apply. Um and you can also apparently I've seen like you can count pinfalls on top of the cage. 
Um, Love that. Yeah, and there's very, also so very WCW pilled of them. Yeah, that's what I say. So how does the escape rules like? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you try you you climb through the little door and um and then get out. There's a really funny clip where um Sachi Abe because Fang is like already climbing down. So in order to win, she just yeets herself off of the cage. Koguma style, that's <laughs> real. Oh my god, that. I think JD Star might have been the Joshi equivalent of WCW. I'm gonna be real. Yeah, the way, the way I'm hearing good. things, and I kind of yeah, love it. it. Dipping and saying "fuck you," I'm not defending the belt no more. This is not mine mm-hmm. no more. I'm wrestling in Rajan, and that was how the show started. <laughs> and then uh, the screen, the screen, the screen quickly fades into the opening match, which was once again Obachi Iska, this time against Giant Obachi. Yeah, Giant Obachi mm-hmm. looked like a weird motherfucker. I'm gonna be real. Yeah, my my only note for this match was that they had the slowest version of the Mana, Manami Toyota like rolling around the ring spot. Oh, the Manami roll. The world. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, Giant looked winded from just doing that spot alone. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Just that spot. She, she was. She made it. She made it like one and a half or two rotations, and she was very very done. Um. Yeah, and then they started fighting. My only note on this match was they fought with baguettes, and then Isco lost because she tripped in, into cake, face first into cake. Um, that was this match. I don't know how this company survived this show because one, at the start of the show, we have one of the biggest draws in the company leaving. Then Same later on in the show, we have another fantastic part of the roster leaving, and then we have yeah. this match. I don't know how this wasn't the final show. <laughs> uh, yeah i mean they they lasted for a while after this too that's the crazy yeah thing. <laughs> no no there's there's no way they were like a monday a money laundering operation for somebody that's a scam honestly man. um yeah. <laughs> the the first actual match the first real match of the show was the jd star junior title tournament semifinal match is yumi oka versus uh teruko kagawa who was not in the first round of this tournament she That's just showed goat. up. She just showed mm-hmm. up, and I think she won. She won the entire tournament. Yay. Hey, hey. um, that, so that's do, that's the buy advantage, man. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, so Yumioka still loves doing bad judo throws at this point. A month did not mm-hmm. change that. Um, Kagawa's yeah. interesting. Because Kagawa's my type of wrestler. She was mm-hmm. just so – she was unorthodox. That's the only way I could describe it. She kept doing oh, yeah, like, moves. Yeah, yeah. She kept I doing said, moves I but doing them like, kind of wrong. Yeah, so I said she had no idea like what she was gonna do, but she's still gonna do it. <laughs> Wise, could you yeah. have any insight on this? Because she was just doing moves wrong, but they kind of look cool. So it's like, yeah, I um, respected it. She was. Let me check how uh, how deep into her career she was here. Um, she she debuted in two thousand and two, so she was really, really new. Or like it says, late two thousand one, but we're not getting matches until like oh two. So yeah. Yeah, she was very, very new. And, she only had uh, a handful of matches, actually. Looking at it. Yeah, she was. It's yeah. sad. She was. She probably would have been the greatest of all time. So it's very sad. Yeah, she was. I want to oh say, God. um, one of the Athres hires. Um, wait a second. Wait a second. Did you guys know why this belt was vacated? Why? Because Maru and Kaga and Kagawa went to a thirty-minute time limit draw. Oh no. That's sick. We gotta you got that? You got the that, to that? And that's only the second worst sounding like on paper draw that I've pitched today or that I've heard today. Oh my god, that's bad. Yeah, like, yeah, because of um they're like so new into their career. They said let's go 30. Oh my god, that's terrible. I mean yeah, there was all, you, you were mentioning there. late stage line is Oscar versus Kyoko and Noah going sixty in JD Star, I believe. Yeah, yeah, in nineteen ninety nine. Nice yeah. nine nine. Um, yeah, that great company. Uh, just, just truly. Yeah. Uh, according wow. to my, according to my one guy, uh, shout out big fellow who has made it his mission to watch all of the singles Joshi draws. Apparently, it was really good. Mm, but... That's terrible. That's so sad. <laughs> how how could you do that? Like I, I would I would go off the deep end. I'm already off the deep. end. I don't end. hate myself further. that much. I hate myself a lot, but I don't know if I hate myself that much. That's. Yeah, yeah like, uh, I believe it. I believe it is above Toyota versus Inoue on on the list at the well, very that's least. Not, that's not hard. I mean, yeah, Toyota, yeah that Inoue is not very good. 
I, I've never liked them together, personally. Um, but this match, this Yumioka versus Kagawa match, like I said, Kagawa, just weird, weird-ass wrestler. Um, she her. won with an armbar that was maybe a triangle lancer, but yeah. either way, it looked bad at either. Like, if it was trying to be an armbar, it looked bad. If it was trying to be a triangle lancer, it looked worse. Um, that, was, that was the hurt lock. Yeah, shouts out Bobby Lashley. Um, yeah, no, she also she... hit... She hit this leaping like code red thing. I don't know what to call it, but it it was not good. But because Oka didn't know how to sell it, she like looked like she broke her neck on it. So it was good all of a sudden, like because it had to be. Because when a wrestler breaks their neck on something, it looks cool. Uh, Weird ass wrestling. I mean, even the Northern Lights suplex, which I know was like an actual suplex with the like having the arm and leg trapped, but it just looked weird. She just kept doing weird shit in the final. She, um, she gives off the energy of like, yeah, I can do wrestling. Yeah, I, I can figure you know, it out. Watches <laughs> watches a move watches a move one time and yeah, I can do that. She's doing it all by memory. Yeah, no, I definitely. Yeah. Y'all heard a theme song, right? What was her theme song? It said "Main Event Kagawa is in your city." Oh hell yeah! <laughs> it's just Muse. It's just Muse. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, what 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 royal wrestling family is she a part of? That's my question. Um, but no, weird match. I didn't hate it, but it, it, there was some weird shit. Um, let's just get into the next match unless you guys have anything else yeah, to say about nothing, nothing that. Else nah, just, nah, nah. Uh, last we see of Yumioka for the show, uh, you'll, you'll get better one day, homegirl. Uh, we know. We yeah, know you yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Kagawa will pop up sometime later in uh, Hoda's JD St- or Hoda's AWG. Yeah, for a couple yeah. of years and then dip again, as so. you do. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have to go check out old lady uh, Kagawa because that sounds wild. I'm trying um, to see Oka's Regina to wave runs. <laughs> oh boy, we have a lot of Joshi to watch. But next match in the JD Junior Tournament, uh, it is the semifinal match is Apple Miyuki versus Maru. This was another match where I was like, oh, Maru seems dope. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Should, I want to see more of her. Um, she mm-hmm. lost though, so that was unfortunate. Uh, Mar- at some point, Miyuki got her her like mouth busted open. Yeah, which I was is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't I mean, know how hard they were going. She this looked match. rough and, after the first yeah match she had, and she looked rough after this one. That's like my only note for this match is like Apple Miyuki just looks like in both of her matches she just went through war. They just <laughs> she'd be fighting for her life, bro. Uh, that eye of the hurricane mm-hmm. couldn't have come quicker. Uh, she hit it actually twice because Maru kind of kicked out. Everybody in the crowd went, eh? Like, I don't think that was a kick out, bro. I, don't, I, don't, I think you fucked up. Um, but then she just hit it again. So, shouts out John Mox and Phoenix. Same, same, same gimmick. Uh, yeah. I yeah, mean, this, and then this, afterwards, Maru like rolled out the ring and, you know, chastised the ref and then went into <laughs> her trailer outside. And, you know, we had everybody from JD Star Committee just waiting outside well, the trailer. Yeah, Linus Asuka was waiting outside, very concerned. Um, and then Linus Asuka actually, even though Linus Asuka doesn't own it, uh, came out and started doing the Dan Garcia dance, you know. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, I mean, we only got a minute of the seven for this match, but this was one of those matches that I was like, oh, I could see. Again, with Maru, I could see, like, where this was trying to be, but I just didn't get to see enough of it to, like, really give it enough of a of a look, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. My whole my whole takeaway from this tournament is, yeah, Maru's, Maru's pretty cool. Yeah, um, yeah, me too, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my takeaway from this tournament. So there's far. some, like, there's some good-looking wrestlers. I was like, oh, that could have been good. She could have been good, whatever. But Maru's definitely the one that's like, oh, yeah, she, well, she, she had it. She got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Next match is a step away from the semi from the uh, junior title tournament. It is uh, Jiagi and Ron Maru versus uh, Keiko Saito and Mizuho Ishikawa. Jiagi, for those who don't know, was Hirumi Yagi. And when I found that out, when I checked her cage match, I found that out. I knew this was gonna cook. Unfortunately, we only got like two minutes of it. Yeah, yeah and they didn't know. do the pairing I wanted to see the most too. Well, at least not in what we saw. I wanted to see Ron Maru and uh, Kai, uh, Keiko Saito. Yeah, no, that would have been good. I mean, like, I think the youngins were. Like, I think I think the here. Yagi and uh, Saito stuff was really, really good. But like yeah. Ron Maru, I just, mm-hmm. I just want to see her and Saito do, do their thing. Yeah, this was the match that, like I said, I wish I saw more. Of. Like this was the match that I knew was good, but like I just didn't get to see enough of it because it was clipped to death. Um, 
and yeah, I mean, you just look at the the Yagi and the like you said the the Saito spots mm-hmm. really good. Uh, Ranru lit up Ishikawa with like one kick and just like destroyed her leg. It was nasty. Yeah, uh, there's just a lot of cool stuff. There's some really smart stuff too. I mean, Yagi countered a jumping DDT with Northern it's Lights. The Northern Lights, yeah, which I really like. Like that's such a simple counter. That Dude, Yagi works anywhere, but it was just so well done. So well Yagi timed. hit Keiko with like three straight X factors because Keiko kept oh, yeah. getting up after each one. <laughs> you know you're dealing with the X factor. That's real. Um, oh, and then the finish, bro. The finish, another classic here. Uh, Yagi ended up winning with an avalanche arm drag. It was it was kind of like a, a judo throw. I guess you would call it an epon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and an a avalanche arm drag into an arm bar. On Saido, it was so clean. It was so cool. I wish I saw more of this match. It seemed very, very good. Uh, yeah, for for the little bit we got to see of it, quite good. Yeah, yeah. There is there is some cool stuff going on here for sure. Um, Yagi is um, or was really good for her time. Um, totally. I mean, I've seen a lot more of her stuff in JW um, in JWP there her matches with kazumi were really really good um yeah i've, I've seen her in arjan obviously a bit yeah more. no no i'm i'm gonna send you after this uh her matches with a few with a huga from like 97 mm. they're very or they're really fun sprints yeah I mean, yeah she she's great <laughs> yeah she did a lot of good stuff uh again ron maru is just awesome um, she's not seri- only a great comedy wrestler. But yeah, serious just- serious Ron Maru is is great, and I need to find like more of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just go watch Zaps. Cues on that. Uh, no, 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 no. Why would I watch a Zaps match? You you ain't rocking with with Zap Isozaki. You ain't rocking with it. I'm not. I'm not rocking with any Zap. That's about. It. What about modern Zap, who's like randomly better than she was 30 years ago? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. yeah, I thought the match could, could have been great. Uh, didn't get to see much of it. Xavier, did you have anything else to say about that other than why nah. was it so bad? No, nah, you hit basically all the points I was going to hit. So. Like, really, you could have just taken the next match out of the, oh, yeah. the TV show and just given yeah. it to Because really cool. uh, really cool. really the next match is DJ Nira. Versus Kazuki in a five-minute time limit match. Yeah. DJ uh, Nero was a DDT guy, I'm pretty sure. No, he um, was a he was a Kai and Tai Dojo rookie. Yeah, he was like so, two months in. Yeah, yeah but I'm pretty DDT sure he Star, goes to DDT. Probably yeah, he he does. Um, JD Star had like a random feud with Kai and Tai Dojo. Yeah, because that's where Apple uh, Miyuki was trained. Yeah, yeah. So they had a they had a feud with them, and that's the entire reason why he's on this show. During one of the matches, I don't remember who, but they name dropped Minoru Fujita because of that. <laughs> Love that. Oh wow! Uh, DJ Nero was also in Got to Move. The most re- the most recent DJ Nero match in Got to Move was a 15 minute match against Balianaki that went to a no contest. Oh Lord. Jesus Christ! That's why is DJ con- Nero going to a no contest? <laughs> Okay. 15 minutes for nothing yeah that's okay. that's about right um yeah. yeah this match i don't know man like for some reason he has kept trying to hug her yeah my my big takeaway from this match is that apparently the sharpshooter is only the second deadliest thing you could do oh yeah the cock and ball crab. torture crab yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you know you know how torture crabs and like in fire pro and shit this is the cock and ball torture crab right here yeah great that was crazy yeah. uh yeah. shouts out Wanted shouts out Momotani riding Hagane. You know, um, the only note I have for this match is indeed, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you know, a match no, that no, Momotani is actually like the pure J rookie I've seen the least of just because she's paired with Kazuki and Radin, and I actively avoid them. <laughs> Radin in the tag matches is usually pretty solid, although yeah. uh, the most recent tag title challenge they had, it was the Momo show and she ruined it, so it's fine. Okay. Love that. Um, but yeah, to, to elaborate a little bit more, um, the last minute of this match, so... We only oh yeah, I guess we should explain why. The last just... minute of the match, um, Kazuki just said, you know what? Nah, we ain't wrestling no more. I'm hitting you in the dick. And she just kicked him in the balls for 30 seconds straight. 
Yeah, and there then... are there are twenty seconds remaining. Continues to kick him in the balls, and then she grabs she grabs the legs and starts and gets a gets a Boston crab in and just starts stomping on his dick. For the last nine seconds of the match, he finally taps out with one second remaining. The drama, the intensity. This yeah. was electric. Real, real grabs. It was terrible. <laughs> um, Kazuki is not good. That that that's the big takeaway. Kazuki, not good. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> at at no point, at no point in time, yes, is she she's... ever like above the mean. That's a crazy way to say that she's not good. Like I respect the the unique yeah. vocabulary. Yeah, no, I mean I I post like um I post in Discord occasionally like she's been mid for twenty years. That's crazy. <laughs> not one highlight. You know, you know, you know how solid like, trainer though. I give it to her. Really good yeah. trainer. Oh, does she does she train over there? Yeah. Oh, then yeah, I mean like shit. All, all you. Um, but you know how there are like sports players with like highlights and shit. You know, like, 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 have you seen the uh, Aaron Rodgers highlight tape of 2023, where it's because it, he got injured in the first? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like it's just him walking out. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the there's, there's what what is it? The new um, TikTok trend of just posting like unremarkable highlights to Iron yeah. Boss. <laughs> exactly. That's 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 Kazuki's career right there. Uh, uh-huh. One of the worst wrestlers with the with the name Azuki ever, because. Um, mm-hmm. Hazuki's just Hazuki's good. That's the difference. Um, but the next match, so we don't dwell on that one too much. Um, next match was the JDU Junior Title Tournament Final. It's Alpha Miyuki versus Taruko. Yeah, K- Kagawa. Um, this match, I, I didn't have anything to say really. Kagawa uh, beasted. I yeah, was... finish was cool. Finish was dope. I have um, a few notes. Yeah. Yeah, but... Xavier, go ahead. Uh, the TTR suplex is the name of Kagawa's uh, leg yeah. hook, double wrist clutch, uh, Northern Lights. Uh, look this move up if you're watching. I love it, and someone needs to bring it back, and that someone should be either Hanan or Aoi. Um, How's Hanan sh- not done that? I don't know. This <laughs> does like... stuff. Anyway, um, the German at the end would make Daisuke Harada happy. That was beautiful. It was so real. Poor yeah. Alpha Miyuki that I can't compliment her, but I'm be honest, Kagawa just beasted her <laughs> in this final. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, like Alpha Miyuki was like, I don't know how she got this far. If I'm being real, I don't uh, either. Yeah. I thought like, like Coco was going she, to the final. She made it, yeah. Because like she was very bare bones as a wrestler mm-hmm. um, at this point in time. Obviously, nowadays she's one of my favorites, but like she she was very. I don't know bare- how she got past Maru. <laughs> well, you gotta yeah, you gotta exactly. protect the Kagawa Maru. Rematch. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. remember, they went thirty. Uh, you, yeah, you that's can't. why. That's, that's all why the, the belt is made to do it again. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, but then we gotta see thirty minutes of it. That's fine. And then, okay. and well, then it, no, we'd minutes. see like ten. They yeah, clip like true. twenty of it. We get four minutes of a thirty minute of the thirty minute draw. That'd be great. Um, you know, that's like a real thing. That's like AJW classics because they clip like the sixty minute time limit draws. Like they'll be like people will just think that's like a great match. And then and it then, turns out uh, that you only like, saw like twenty of the sixty minutes. And it's like, yeah, yeah that's why yeah. it's a great match, uh, which has pretty much saved like Kyoko, Kyoko Inoue's career. Because um, if I had to see full length Kyoko Inoue thirty minute, sixty minute draws, I would be the biggest hater. Um, I, I couldn't do it. But. Yeah, I mean, uh, new junior champion, woo, who, you know. Yeah, honestly, at this point, I had kind of glazed over and was waiting for Nana Momo to kick in. Yeah, exactly. I think I think um, that was how I was, too. Yeah, uh, the suplexes were nice, though. I was going to say, respect the goat. Oh, the yeah. drop kick to the back of the head was nasty, too. Oh, yeah, that was the, right before the, the German. The Okada <laughs> drop kick. It was, it was the old, uh, the Kenny Omega Okada drop kick. Best spot in that match, for real. Uh, and they stole it from Taruko. <laughs> uh, they were watching tapes. Um, yeah, no. Um. Well, yeah. Other other people were obviously doing that. Yeah, but you know. there. I mean, Hikari Fukuoka was doing a flip into that. <laughs> oh shit! I know what you're talking about. I remember that now. <laughs> yeah, I totally it, forgot it, that she does that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was nasty, man. That shit rules. Anyway, uh, into the two, the double main event. Let's just call it because they're both pretty big matches. Mm-hmm. Um. Next up is Megumi Yabushi. Yabu- I said it again. Jesus. Yabushita yeah. and Sumi Sakai against Nanamomo, Momoe Nakanishi, and Nai Takahashi of all 
Japan Women's Pro Wrestling. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Sumi got an entrance. That's how I figured out that she was dipping. Because uh, I was like, why is she the one that gets an entrance? But it was, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's because she is out of here. Her last um, hurrah. Um, before she goes to the U.S. Indies. And she some never reason. went back, pretty much. I mean, she did, but, you know. She, 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 yeah, she popped back in. Like, she comes back for, like, Diana occasionally, from what I can tell on. Occasionally. She wrestled a Zumi a couple years ago in stardom. That was crazy. In just a singles match. <laughs> Don't know why that happened, but I remember it. Um, wide screen, I'll start with you. How did you feel about this match? Because you said you watched it before. Yeah, this yeah. yeah. Uh, um, this... How do you feel on rewatch? Um, this held up to what I, what I had seen or what my opinion of it previous, I just, um, yeah, uh, Sumi and Momo is a pair that I wish we had gotten more of, or Momo, um, yeah. is a pair I wish we had gotten more of just historically because they're, they're very similar wrestler or style wise, at least. Yeah. They um, Sumi, well. Sumi is kind of JD Star's version of Momoe or um, Nagashima. Is how I'd call her. She's kind of their version of it, where we have you know a short, a you know a short wrestler who does a lot of high speed stuff or proto high speed stuff. Yeah, um, that's a good comparison. But yeah, uh, they cooked. Um, Nanai is here, and I yeah. And is awesome because she's an eye in 2002. She's busting yeah. out suicide dives. Um, if you, yeah, if you want to know why Nanai moves the way she does now, just watch old Nanai and you'll get it. Um, <laughs> if you want to know, if you want to know why her high spot is yelling, they're they're yelling in this match too. Oh, yeah, they're, that's they're, like they're, one of they're my yelling a notes. lot in this match too. I, I love, I love the yells. I love the um, there, there was a spot, and I know that. Uh, listen to me on Storm Quest to hear more about this, but there's a spot on like a new blood show or whatever where Nanai comes out and the crowd's just going, Passion! 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 I was like, I love this. This is like, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, man, like, on. my favorite backstage clip of the year is the encouragement Nanai gave to Saki before her uh, high speed title match where she just <laughs> like hits her in the back as hard as possible and yells, Passion! <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a there was a screenshot or like a, a screen grab of you going like, well, Nanai wasn't feeling very passionate today, so she took a rest. Okay, calm down. Yeah, yeah she she has to recharge her. <laughs> yeah, passion. she needs to recharge her passion. She'll be back. Uh, but yeah, that shouts out Nanai. Love her. She's the goat. Um, yeah, I I need to see more Megumi and Sumi. Like mm -hmm. I like just personally because they yeah, have such I... an interesting dynamic together and they're so good. Um, and this match really showed that. And yeah, I mean, Nana Momo. If you don't know, you should know. Nana Momo is insane. Uh, Xavier, how, how do you feel? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'll just run through what I have here. I said, if any newer fans ever wondered if Nana, if Nanai was ever any quieter before, well, it's 2003, <laughs> and I can tell you that that just nah, that wasn't happening. No, I <laughs> I found her debut match on YouTube, and she's yelling there too. It's it's just all she gets it. There. She you gets know, it. Usually wrestlers like grow out of that. She just didn't. Because like it's a passion, baby. Like when when she was younger, Hanan would scream. Like she like every move she yeah, had, yeah, it would be right. like it would be like bone chilling. Like and I was just like, you need to calm down, homegirl. Um and like she eventually like kind of like stopped, but <laughs> it's been like 30 years and then I never did, and I love her for that. Go ahead. Um Yabushita catches uh, Momo with a mean judo throw that I know the name too, but I can't remember it at this moment. Um, and then she like quickly transitions that into arm breaker. It was super sick. Uh, Yabushita went for something similar to Kaito Ishida's arm trap tiger suplex. And basically she added a leg hook to it. And if she would have hit that flush and spiked uh, Momo on her head, no, it was not I she was doing it to. On an eye on her head, I probably would have gave her rest of the century. Um, <laughs> Disappointed that I've only caught the tail end of Sumi's career, and it's all been in the U.S. because she was excellent across both of these shows, especially in this match. Yeah, yeah. Eff effortless high flyer. That and her top rope Frankensteiner is so unique, and I've never seen anybody do a Frankensteiner like this. Like, it's the way she does it. It's a pretty Frankensteiner, but whenever her and her opponent comes down, there's so much impact whenever they hit the mat. It's just insane. Um, 
I am a fisherman busters enthusiast, as many people yes. may know. Like all my favorite wrestlers do this move. <laughs> uh, so the double version of Megumi and Sumi did make me very, very happy. Uh, awesome match. I I have no complaints. This was great. Yeah, totally. No, I totally agree. Uh, widescreen, how about you? Do you want to dive yeah. a little bit deeper into it? Yeah, this this match um was just overall really, really good stuff. Um you have like I think the two biggest spots in the match from here this time were um it was the Nanai suicide dive where she takes out Momo and then mm-hmm. they immediately transition to um Megumi flipping onto both of them. Hell yeah. Uh, that was this was sick. also um the match where they did the uh like this crazy angle for uh Sumi's moonsault. It was the regular uh it was when she did it to uh, Nakanishi, she hit her with a fisherman buster, and then she did a. Uh, it wasn't a double jump, but it was a moonsault press, and it was like a really pretty angle, and you could see like just yeah. how perfect her moonsault press was. Yeah, and then you um, you have this uh, spot, and I think it's in the middle of the match where just all of them are doing springboards one after the other. Yeah, and I really really liked that um that as well um but yeah overall just really good uh match both of these teams rock um sumi um unfortunately like i don't know if she falls off in the states or more it's more just like it's just the state of american wrestling yeah the talent the talent pool just wasn't there like i mean her best her best uh opponents in that time are chris hero and claudio (laughs) (laughs) so yeah probably yeah Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I, there, I don't think I mean, and, and Jazz didn't want Jazz didn't want Takako and Noe doing her move too. So that was not yeah. Right. There, I'm trying to think because there was a period, but I, the funny thing is, is that I don't think uh, Sumi ever really wrestled in Shimmer much because like there was a period when Shimmer started being like a a reputable you know yeah big time company and that uh, was, um, was wrestling yeah and Shimmer was kind of after Sumi's prime she had to go over there yeah. in the era of women's extreme wrestling which is yeah and she the star of um yeah, yeah the man, star of just... two wrestling with regret videos yeah not good uh, uh, did she ever wrestle with shimmer? that's crazy because yeah eventually uh shimmer did kind of start popping off in like the you know 2010s early 2010s i would say um, late 2000s i have it pulled up and it doesn't look like she ever really wrestled. Yeah, shimmer. she just did not wrestle in Shimmer. She which is insane. Everywhere else, she just <laughs> she like... just came to America in a bad era. Yeah, and and she accidentally didn't wrestle in the only good place for women's wrestling uh, for like a decade. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a shit. I mean, yeah, you really look at it. I mean, she wrestled Mercedes uh, Martinez, which probably was a good match in 2010. But you know, like like you do you look at sumi sakai and uh like her cage match is a five out of ten and it's yeah. just like that's she's purely a victim of when she yeah. was around right she's 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 a victim of people watching like she's her american stuff now so yeah. like she's a victim of people watching 40 something sumi sakai in ring of honor yeah um, no totally yeah and that's that's that explains the cage match she's and her sp- her style is also a style that doesn't translate yeah. age-wise very well. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. age well. Um, I believe Manami she's had to Toyota, change it drastically. Yeah, Manami Toyota explained it that it's like the reason she retired was because uh, she was just getting like heavier with age, and that's just how yeah, it works. Yeah, no, it's slower, um, and she was basically like, "Not only can I not trust other people to catch me, I can't trust myself to throw throw myself at them." So yeah. that's my entire. Like, there's no point in me wrestling if I can't do the thing that I was doing for so long and that everybody knows me for and that, that I was good at. Uh, and that, Sumi Sky obviously is retiring later this year, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. But that was kind of the case for a while is that it's like she had to really drastically try, change her style because not only can you not really trust the wrestler she's wrestling because she didn't have a very high caliber of opponent, you know, pool over the, the past two, two decades in in america but she's also just gotten older and she can't really wrestle the style we saw in these shows um at that level anymore so i do think that sumi sakai will go down in history as like such a underrated competitor because she was like you said she was like one of those uh, like prototypes for high speed wrestling in in joshi and she was just great at it yeah and unfortunately you think think her career 
uh, is looked back on more fondly if she just simply stayed in Japan and just didn't go to America because she would have worked in a lot more companies and it depends. We would have access to a lot better matches than it, what it, she was like, having in America. Go ahead, white it, screen. It depends because, like, as much as we kind of because, like, we're right around the corner from the dark period. So, like, yeah, yeah. As long as as tricky. much as we as much as we like can question the decision to move to the American scene. It's not like the Joshi scene is getting yeah. or is, is going to be much better. In Would the, she have had patience for like the all the different like companies popping up? And, yeah, and we also think, don't know if she had heat with anybody or anything like yeah. that. I think the um, big thing is that she pretty much exclusively wrestled in America for like four or five years when she was theoretically going to be in her prime. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like and 2006 up with I'm trying to see. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe it's like, yeah, by 2006, she just didn't wrestle in Japan anymore. Um, yeah. And then she didn't go back to Japan for like anything until mm-hmm. Diana in 2011. So like for those five years when she would theoretically be in her prime, 10 years in, you know, she, she started in 97. So 10 years in, uh, you know, she age. she should have been in that knockout division with Yo Kim and Awesome Kong. Yeah, 100%. Exactly. Like, There's everything. like no reason she shouldn't have been there. Yeah. yeah. Um and then you look at like she's she's also kind of in a similar boat to Momoe where it's like why did you have to retire or leave right before like your best style matchup was about to happen? It was about to boom. Oh, yeah, yeah cuz like once you get to like the late 2000s then you have um Tayo and Leon and Yonayama running around. It would Yeah, been, totally. Yeah, great to see. Because I mean, she she wrestled a bit in Neo before she left, but like you know, not like not once it. I, I get what you mean. It's it's very difficult and it's very you know unfortunate that I don't know if Sumi Sakai will like be looked back on as fondly by like Joshi wrestling fans at least, um, because you know there there will be people who watched her in Ring of Honor or or not yeah. maybe not Ring of Honor, but people who watched her you know 15 years ago in Chikara and were like, oh that's so dope. She was actually really sick. Um, but, you know, outside of those people, it, she kind of fell on the wrong side of both swords, right? Where it's like, okay, well, she doesn't have enough great matches in Japan that are easily accessible to, to seek out for the Joshi fans. But she oh, also yeah. didn't have the pool of competitors to face in America to where she would make such a huge impact in America that people would remember her for that. So yeah. it, it is kind of, um, you know, unfortunate that yeah, that's how she's, it ends up. She's both... She's both like not, you know, a long mainstay or a long standing mainstay of Joshi, like, you know, someone like Kaori is. Yeah. Or would turn it would turn out to be. And she's not, you know, a trailblazer or viewed as a trailblazer in American women's wrestling either. Yeah, exactly. So she's just kinda doesn't have a lane. Uh-huh. Um, if you guys want a really, really good match recommendation for Sumi, uh Sumi versus the bloody. Uh, from 2001 is really really good it's in a uh, curriculum hall uh, i got a link to it and i can uh oh. drop it after the uh after we're done recording yes yeah, check, Sumi, check check a uh, widescreen's twitter i'm sure i'll tweet it and i uh, will figure yeah, it out sumi, sumi takes so many bad bumps in that <laughs> match it is ridiculous but uh but yeah i mean like like i said sumi great at her style and just really great in this match mm-hmm. uh show some love to sumi she is obviously retiring this year like i said so yeah. show, show her some love and you know some support as she goes yeah. out uh yeah end of the match the finish was uh sumi just kicking out of everything and then nanomoma finally hitting the t gimmick on her mm-hmm. and winning the yeah, match yeah. still still in an eye tag finisher oh hell yeah Shouts all these the years later <laughs> It's funny because she's been using it longer than the name T gimmick has existed. Because uh, that was a again a Trent, second Trent Acid reference on the show, but that was the Trent Acid uh, name for the for the Backstreet Boys. They did the same Backseat Boys. They did the same move. Um, but yeah, really really good match. On to the main event of the show. Uh, it is the Queen of the Ring Championship match, four way LSD two thousand and three. Uh, Fang Suzuki defending the belt against the Bloody uh, Sachi Abe. And Hiroyo Muto, um, people from all up the card on the show beforehand. Obviously, mm-hmm. Muto was beating uh, the the comedy wrestler in the opener. Uh, the Bloody and Suzuki, and Suzuki lost. Sachi Abe 
you know, wasn't in the decision for the tag title match. Uh, I thought that was, this was an interesting lineup when I saw it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the LSD that I match are. is like a championship scramble, but they like it's, get points. It's, and it's like kind of like an Iron Woman match, I want to yeah. say. Yeah, that's, how, that's what I'm um, saying. It's like, but they get points. So it's like most yeah, points, points. I've seen like, like who's just champion, whatever that. Yeah, I've inspires. seen like, um, two lsd matches um this one included um and yeah there's always just like a long time limit and you're scoring points in okay with that is time. one thing i need to point out um because yes yeah, so as he was saying it is a it was like a 30 something it was like that's, 33 that, yeah. minutes on the clock was, okay whenever. okay so the match was a iron woman match it was a four-way iron woman match basically that's mm-hmm. you know yeah. um the the match time when the bell rang was 33 minutes and 22 seconds. That was the time limit. Why? I think, maybe I think they we were might getting have, cut out. Yeah, maybe. Except we didn't. Re- we didn't need no, to go it, to overtime because Fang scored a third point with uh, yeah, the yeah. And the, the timer was live in the arena. You could see it on the wall of court. <laughs> it was at 33 minutes and 22 seconds. That's when yeah, the I, bell, the match started. I was like, who decided that? <laughs> what was the purpose? Of that the, specifically, the the only suggestion is uh in or for how this started is in the match name itself LSD. <laughs> like, man, that's a mess. <laughs> I loved this. I was just like so fun. <laughs> like it was so stupid, but I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, there's, yeah. I mean, the most notable on. point of the match is when Bloody just leaves Sachi Abi hanging from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. This, this is where like, this is when the harness and just came threw her over. Me. Yeah, she just put her in a harness, threw her over, and like Sachi had to like she had to Stop. orient herself by like clinging to a pipe on an undercling of the. And like, as the seconds, all, as the yeah, seconds just, to try to save her while she's yeah. like, Dang. all I'm saying is, my Yuwatani would have took that bump. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, she was to let me fall, bro. But you also forgot the other. A bloody spot where instead of a full on Oricon, she just raises the back of her hand up and smacks the crap out of Sachi Abi for the first ball. <laughs> Bro, the, the, wait, oh, wait, I didn't even notice that because I was confused. I was like, wait, why does the bloody have two points now? Um, that's insane. But yeah, I mean, the bloody was insane in this. This was an insane match in general. Like, I, like mm-hmm. widescreen said, the bloody hooked Abby up to like a harness and like just threw her over the balcony, and so he was just dangling in the air for a while. Um, and then mm-hmm. it like cut over to Mudo and Suzuki, who were just like doing the most fucked up spots that nobody was paying attention to because somebody was being oh, yeah, because because the spotlight was on somebody dangling from the yeah balcony. yeah. So it's like I think I think Fang threw Muto like to the suplex onto off of the stage onto the floor of Gorkin with chairs and nobody yeah. was paying attention. <laughs> it was incredible. Um and then like eventually they got back into the ring. There were some cuts here and there, but it was just chaos. Bloody got her second fall, I suppose, with the bloody X. Um Fang mm-hmm. Suzuki got her first with the sleeper on Muto. And I was so confused about what the points meant because I did not see the first fall from the bloody. Yeah. So I was like, why does she have two points? I knew because I was amazed. That? She just like pimp hand Sachi Abi so hard. <laughs> it's great. Oh my god. Oh, and then and then Muto was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm brain bustering everybody. And she got two points. She she got the bloody and Abe with brain busters. Um Fang Suzuki got another point. She pinned Abe mm-hmm. as well. Oh, Abe was like just a getting, bomb. Yeah, with the Liger yeah, bomb. Abe was in here to eat pins. Abe was getting fucked up for like. She, she wound up with zero match. points. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no she, she got didn't. two. She got she two. She got two because okay, she was spamming. You know, she she knew. <laughs> she she was like, hmm, Suzuki's really bad at, at dodging the La Mahi straw. So yeah. I'm going to hit her with as many La Mahi straws as possible. Yeah. And, she, and I'll pin her. I'll pin her for some of them. Uh, so she got two points out of that, just repeatedly pinning Suzuki with Lama Estral. Um Abe also went for a big suicide dive, and, <laughs> and Suzuki was just like, fuck you, and just you threw just a chair at her, chair. and she just ate shit to the point where everybody was concerned that she was, like, knocked out because she ate so much shit. Yeah, no, uh, that was, that was like, I mean, there 
there are suicide dive spots where like the person gets hit with something and just stops on the ropes. Like um, yeah. Mayu versus Julia, where Julia like hits her with an umbrella, and Mayu's kind of just <laughs> yeah, and Ju- and Mayu's kind of just hanging from the ropes. No, um, she went like through, and I think yeah, her she- leg also clipped one of the ropes. Yeah, so she was face first onto yeah, the... Yeah, and then she got a chair hooked at her, and she just ate shit. Yeah. It was nasty. Um, and uh, then... That was, like, three out of five Emmys I'd give in terms of oh, eating I, shit on suicide. I don't know. I think that might have been, like, a 2.75. 2.75, 2. 2. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Emmy one, the, if you guys don't know the Emmy Sakura uh, suicide dive spot... That's the yeah, nastiest there's, spot there's I have a, literally every scene yeah, in Professor Yeah, there is a giant trigger warning. That didn't, like, kill someone. Yeah, I mean, like, no, the, I, the, the New Jack ones, like, maybe. But, like, yeah. like of, like, actual wrestling that you just... Yeah, she died. Yeah, um, I think when I posted that in a Discord, I let off with the, do you guys want to see a dead body gif? <laughs> <laughs> like, right. That's how I prefaced it. Uh, I already know who I want to be in our LSD match. <laughs> who? Uh, it's Aoki, Sare, yeah. uh, Yoshinobu yeah. Kanemaru, and Hiroyo okay. Matsumoto. <laughs> What's Uncle Nobu doing in there? Don't, don't worry about that, man. He's gonna he's gonna steal a bunch of pins. You'll mess right there. No, that's gotta be Gemba. We gotta get Gemba out of retirement. Yeah, I'm adding I'm adding to a list of things to save Zavi. Have you seen the um? Have you seen the uh, Emmy Sakura um, suicide dive? Nah. How have you not seen that? Oh my god! You know what? I, Just a sec. I'm dropping yeah. it in the Discord right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a live reaction for Xavi okay. because it's okay. disgusting. I was going to say, have y'all seen the uh, 2009 Minami Toyota in the same ring as Masaki Mochizuki? Okay. Well, let, me, let me see. No, no, you 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 don't get it. You do not get it's it. Different. Uh, let's see. Where this is, is this long. being sent? Sorry. This is in the No Limit Discord channel. Okay. Okay. Because I everybody you don't... go check it out. Uh, go to the five star network. Yeah, you... This is a little ad. Go to the five star network Discord. Oh, I already have that pulled open. That's sick. Okay. Go go to the five star network Discord and uh and go to the no. Oh network. my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh! Oh! oh. Yeah. And she's still Dude, around. She, that, no. was, that was still wrestling. It was what twenty four years ago, 20, almost yeah, twenty five yeah. years ago. Don't know how she made it twenty four years. That was before she was Emmy Sakura. I'm pretty sure that was Emmy um, Motokawa. Motokawa. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Emmy Motokawa. When we get off of this, I'm showing this to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to see. Um, but yeah, she ate shit, but not that much shit. Uh, go check yeah. out the five star Discord if you want to see how much shit Emmy Sakura ate in 1990. That's insane. Um, oh, but yeah. but back to the match. Uh, from there, Muto became my new favorite wrestler because she was just like, you know what? I'm done. I hit my brain busters. They didn't all work. It's headbutt time, and she just headbutts everybody <laughs> as hard as she fucking can, just over and over mm-hmm. again, and it was great. And then she does this to everybody. Everybody's out. And then Suzuki gets back up and just hits her with a clothesline and gets another point. <laughs> like Muto was out of roll, and then she's like, "Nah, clothesline." I mean, that's oh, always cool. the risk. That's always the risk of shoot headbutts, right? Is that you're dealing as much because damage? Like, as you, all, yeah, all you're you're all giving them. you're taking as much damage as you're dealing. So. Creeping and selling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so she died, and then uh, the bloody and, and Suzuki did some cool stuff near the end as everybody just kind of scrambled to get their last point. And nobody did. Uh, Suzuki ended up winning with three points to two to two to two. Um, yeah, I thought this was like really fun. I thought this was just chaos. It's yeah, kind of yeah. what I wanted out of, out of a JT Star uh, chaos main event. It was just yeah, insane. Yeah. This is super fun. this is um yeah, that's like part of why I picked this show is because I knew it had the really good tag, and then I knew we had a had a sampling of the chaos um in the main. Um, Xavier, yeah, have you recovered from the suicide dive? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> but go ahead, watch screen eyes. I'm sorry. It, but yeah, it was just really fun, chaotic stuff. Um, these matches, like like I said with um, the LCO one, I just have less of a problem with clipping. Normally, I despise clipped matches. Yeah. So it's funny that I chose an all clipped show <laughs> for this because normally I hate clipped matches. But um, but I feel like you know with like just the mess and everything happening, it's just a lot 
easier to there's like, an art there's an art to clipping shows for sure yeah like certain... it's a lot easier to ignore clipping when it's just chaos yeah yeah totally and i mean yeah. it, it was it was a 33 minute you know iron woman match like that was yeah. what it was so it's like you know us getting to see 20 minutes of it mm-hmm. 25 minutes of it that's fine i'm fine with yeah that. no uh Xavier, did least... you have any oh go ahead, go ahead. Uh, my least favorite type of clipping is the one where it's like they're outside and it just clips to them doing a move in the middle of the ring oh yeah like I mean, it's super yeah. noticeable. Yeah, that that's same that's thing with like favorite. with tag teams matches where like somebody will be selling like really hard for like a while, and then it just cuts to past the hot tag. I'm just like, well, mm-hmm. why would you just cut? like that's so dumb. <laughs> uh, but Davey, I, I don't think I've I've gotten much from you on this main event. How, just go, give me, give me the rundown. How you feel? How you feel about it? I uh, I don't know honestly. <laughs> I mean, I did think it was better than the LCO match. I did have a good time with it. Like I said, the Bloody Rocks, whoever said that she's bad, I beg to differ. She pimp hand the crap out of uh, Abe, and y'all got to see it for yourselves because the announcers called it a hurricane, but it was not a hurricane. She did not spin. Slap. She just raised the back of her hand and let her have it. She was good uh, at that, too. She was. She hit a few of those over these two shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she was sick. Um yeah, Muto was cool across these two shows. Uh, Abe is a mixed bag, but she was willing to die for this, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, Abe, Abe is kind of their big kind of marketable star at this point, I'd say. Marketable. Oh, I can see that. In air quotes, because she's like the clean baby face one. Uh, yeah, I can see it's that. funny because she's tagged with Kazuki. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but compared to like Fang, who obviously is doing her shark slash, yeah. you know, heal stuff and bloody who just beats people up you know she's kind of the the baby face of the promotion at this point especially with sumi just dipping yeah i get that um but yeah fang ends up that is crazy the last the last queen of the ring champion was shiri yeah (laughs) how many lsd matches was she in Probably uh, none. I don't think that. Okay, okay. It, it was, it was Ant Lady, aka Shuri, uh, who won the belt in a Genki Kashima Project show. Yeah, in a, you like know. a freelance show. Yeah, this. Is, oh, this um, is like a ten. This is a ten Ryu uh, produce. Show. Ah, okay. To beat Makoto. Yeah. Yeah, insane. But um, as as I was actually looking at. Or trying to look at, she ended up. Fang ended up losing it eight months later to Kanemisu. Who's that? Hiroya Muta. Oh, they changed her name. Yeah. Oh, so she just changed okay. name for no reason. <laughs> I was yeah. so confused. Eight uh, eight month Fang run. That's oh sad. no, it was it was longer. It was it was almost a year because this started. It was uh, yeah, three hundred twenty one days. The yeah. longest reign in title history. The longest reign in title history. The longest no reign, known reign. Entire history. No one right yeah. yeah. These things are kind of messy. Yeah, because they're, they're, it's vacant all the time. But yeah, so that was that show. That was those shows. That was the JD Star double mm-hmm. feature. So Let's what was your... Thoughts. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, what was your uh, match of the shows, I guess, it, we can uh, describe yeah, it as? What was the top match? And uh, why screen you go first? Um, night one, I'd say is, uh, this is just overall. What do you think if like, if you had to recommend one match from this entire two shows, two shows, I'd, I'd probably recommend, um, I'm torn between Megumi Sumi and Nanamomo versus, uh, Megumi and Sumi. Um, I'd probably recommend, uh, the Megumi Sumi singles match. Um, Mm -hmm. just cause I thought it was really is just really nice and it's really um kind of contained mm-hmm. um it doesn't take up too much time so like you know it's a lot easier to talk somebody into watching a uh to watching a uh you know clipped 15 minute ish match than it is or you know a clip down yeah. to 15 minutes match than it is to watch you know a 26 27 minute yeah match. i mean that that was a that was a 20 minute draw and it we got to see like 15 16 minutes yeah, of it. yeah. So yeah it was definitely a healthy cut uh yeah. i would definitely agree I, i'm definitely going with the, with the singles match from uh the beginning of the end of the beginning 2002 uh is sumi sakai and megumi uh yabushita i said it right and yes, did. 
and yeah, I, th- I just thought that match was like genuinely great. The the I think that stands out above like all of the other matches. There are some really good matches on these shows. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong, but that one just stands out where it's like I think most people should watch that match because it was really good. Xavier, oh me, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking um, Wanted versus Ranmaru and Tsunami for match. For, no yeah, match. Ain't yeah. No Tell me. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Because it was bad, bro. <laughs> I know. That's why I yeah. want people to see it. Y'all took the match I was going to say, so <laughs> I just want to watch a bad one. Can't you at least lie and just say the Nanamomo match? Nah, nah. <laughs> Don't nobody want to watch tags. Let's be real. You just yeah, recommended no, I, a tag. Everybody should find. That was for a title. Okay, that was <laughs> meaningless. I didn't even peep that. That's the great thing. <laughs> um, no, obviously everybody should watch Hiromi Yagi and Ranmaru versus the the rookies, even though it was two minutes of, of actual uh, viewable wrestling. But my second one was the singles uh, for um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And how about worst matches of these shows? Uh, oh man, take a pick. What? I gotta yeah, go. Wide screen, that's all you. As as a human male, I've got to go. DJ Nero versus Kazuki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. that's like because I just forgot it. Like, because I was like, oh, it was probably that. It was probably it served like match. no purpose whatsoever. Actually, I take that back. I'm going uh, the uh, opener of night two. The, <laughs> the opener, opener of night two is pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. But and they that, had the back yet. That wasn't Bachi, uh, Obachi's fault. It was Giant Obachi's fault. Giant Obachi was very tired. Yeah. They had the back yet. I don't that's even what, know if we have a. We don't even have a cage match for Giant. No, we she, don't know who not. that was. She looked weird. I'm I'm yeah. real. She kind of made me uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> she probably wasn't a wrestler. <laughs> yeah, I don't fucking know who she was. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I forgot about the GJ Nara match. Like that that was how bad it was. I, I just completely like eliminated it from my brain because I was gonna say, oh, maybe it was like the tag match. Maybe it was, you know, maybe it was this. Maybe it was that. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely DJ Nara versus Kazuki because it was just Kazuki. I think Kazuki's the bad. Yeah, I think that's, just, that's where we're going to run with. It's just oh, my God. Here they go. Anyway. Anyway. She is not wanted. I'm just saying. That's a lie. It's in the name, but whatever. <laughs> uh, so, what we usually do is we come together with a proper rating for the show. Um, since we have two shows, we'll give two different ratings. So for night one, what is a rating everybody's feeling? We usually do it out of 10. Out of 10? Yeah. And it ain't no way it's reaching any of the ones we've watched before. But. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm aware. I mean, we usually do it out of 10 or we do like a letter grade. We kind of yeah. do both. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Letter grade. I'm going to go. Letter grade's probably easier to do. Uh, for the yeah, because I'm going to get cooked if I like give a high number grade. <laughs> yeah. We'd probably ban you, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, like, the bad was was bad, but the good was good. So I'd give, like, maybe a C plus, B minus. You are so generous. Okay. The, I, first, the, first show, the first show, I would give a C. Because they had a great, it had a great singles match. They had a really fun. I, I, I might be on like alone, but I really thought that the main event was fun, even though yeah. it was just. Oh, I, kind of I enjoyed the main. I enjoyed the main. doing shtick, but I thought that was super fun. And yeah. then the rest was like unoffensive, you know, like mm-hmm. the. Uh, I thought the opener was funny. Like it, it wasn't anything. And then the, the tag title match I thought was really bad, but like that was it. That was the only yeah. bad match on the show. Everything else was just fine. Yeah. Let, let me tell you, for I'm also kind of grading on a curve because, like, That's from true. 2002, like, if you're getting two pretty good matches on the card, <laughs> that's all you can yeah. ask for. Like, no, I can, right. <laughs> uh, first show, I'm going C minus just because the I think C only minus thing, is a fair place. just because, like, outs, if you take that singles off that card, man, this is yeah, definitely yeah. F territory. <laughs> Yeah, it's like if it's not F, it's like D plus D minus territory. Yeah, yeah, so for like, sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I would, I would probably go C minus for the first show. I think that's a fair. Uh, yeah, that's a fair. You know, C even is a fair grade too. Yeah, yeah, uh, you, you know, somewhere around there. And then the second show. show Do you guys like the second show more or less? 
I did it, actually. Yeah. It, just well, because have... the because oh, the main event was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tag match, of course, was great. But yeah. also, like the like, like I said, I think Kagawa was really sick on the show. So, like, also take her performance into account, and then also the Ranmaru tag. I yeah, that was good. So I definitely think this one was a lot better. Yeah, this one well, had it, higher highs and lower lows. Yeah, sure. well, it di- well it had the worst match between the two shows. It also didn't have um the awkward like tag in between the two like passable matches. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I agree. I would I'd probably put this at a C. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I'm. T- I'm I would say overall, I would say one. overall, these two shows together, this episode, C. C. It's, it's that's, a, it's, that's a solid grade. It's a clean yeah, C. Because uh, there were undeniably easy. good matches, and there was some really fun stuff on these shows. Mm-hmm. But uh, like w- watching them in full, watching all thirteen matches, is not something I would recommend. <laughs> oh yeah. no, uh, no, don't. But you know, yeah, like no. if you pick I... a cheese, if you if you pick the the single the you know the sumisakai match from the first show and the main event if you feel like watching that and then you take you know a couple of the sh- matches from the second show I, I definitely think you'll have a fun time watching it but yeah as a yeah, whole I, thing it's, it's a bit i rough. can tell you there's a reason why i don't consume shows like from this era like that and i yeah. only, and i only watch the undercard for because i'm doing this part. we were discussing doing these uh doing the show with widescreen when me and him were talking about it he was like can can i please just do a compilation because like yeah. you don't want it you don't want to do the undercard you don't want to do the undercard and i was like, like i was like nah it's it needs to be like one you know continuous show yeah it has, yeah. To, it has to be like a, a, a whole product type of thing uh yeah and i understand why you why you wanted to do a compilation yeah but yeah. you know it was it was an insight into no, we, the good and bad of JD Star. Yeah. I, I don't know if my grade for the, the second year... show was C plus, by the way. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I, would, I think I would say C probably even for this show is fine. Yeah. It, it, it for for these two shows is fine. Yeah. Totally. Um, but yeah, we've been talking for two hours. That's longer than any any rational human being in t- 2023. We'll talk about JD Star from 2002. We're um, not rational human oh, yeah. beings. But, exactly. Um, oh no, we are not. not. When, when it's let, let me just put it in perspective for everybody it's almost eight o'clock uh where i live um i go to work at like 6 30 in the morning so whenever my coworkers ask me what i did on my day off i, I said I, i'm gonna tell them i talked for two hours about uh, a dead company called jd star and then show them the kazuki dj nero match no i'm gonna show them the soccer dot <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah watch this this is not from the show i watched <laughs> i was like you see that that wasn't it <laughs> Yeah, this this was chaotic. This was this was fun at times. This was disturbing at times. But it was it was JD Star from this era. So um, yeah. I'm, I thank you all for listening. Uh, widescreen, how about you shout yourself out? Uh, just give yourself a little. Uh, of, oh you know, yeah, blood. I yeah. Um, follow me at widescreen Joshi. I am like I I'm a better version of Proflosion because I just post a clip like once a month. That I find cool the shot, and that he's never true. seen. Yep. Um, yeah, and that I didn't steal. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, just follow me. Follow me on there. He's um, shooting. But yeah, yeah I, uh, widescreen friend of mine uh, has a lot of great random. He he texts me randomly about just the most random like <laughs> middle of two thousands Joshi thing, and I'm just like, yeah, I, I only know half of what you're talking about, but I kind of dig it. Yeah, I I need. I'm trying to do writing on the 2000s. It's just very, very hard to write about wrestling. Writing's hard. We're gonna writing start. We're gonna bring on more people to start beefs with uh, other Twitter accounts. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then Zavi is Zavi. He's always Zavi. Like, yeah. Like, he's, he's Zaviism's around. three eyes. Uh, don't follow me if you're a New Japan fan. It's not a safe space for you. Um, Good thing I am not. Uh, I, I've, yeah. I've I've stayed away from talking to Zavi because uh, Yoshinobu Kanemaru just left. Just five guys. Yeah, I'm very depressed about it, and I just don't want to interact with him about that. Like, Ooh. Well, you gotta make they gotta Ooh. make room for Kazu, right? Ooh. Oh my god, fucking Nakajima and just five guys. Him <laughs> just being a guy, crazy. Uh, uh, I, I love the fact that in 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 uh, Puro right now, the joke is. Anybody who doesn't have a current affiliation is gonna become a guy, and I love that. Like Yuya is becoming a guy. Uh, <laughs> random dude who's who's showing like you know uh, 
Mason Mansoor becoming guys. That's for sure. You know, I mean, like I love that. Um, yeah, but basically, if you're a New Japan fan, don't follow me unless I like you, uh, because I make exceptions for people I like. Um, talking about me. Uh, yeah, and also if you're if you get your feelings hurt very easily, don't also don't follow me. It's not that I'm a dick. It's just that I am very, <laughs> very set in my ways, and I I'm not lying. Or swaying my opinion for anybody. Xavierism's three eyes. Uh, hopefully, when they start purging accounts, I can get Xavierism with one eye. But yeah, that at least that. Uh, next two episodes for sure. Scott and uh, Sandre. Uh, whenever this episode goes up, I'll ask for people to contact Dylan if they want to do this because I cannot be bothered to respond to people. That is my job. Um, and over here, go follow me at xxichiban because I am. Uh, my favorite number is 21, and I am number one. But I was about to do the Storm Quest outro. I'll, uh, nope, we do are, it. We're here. We are the best, and we are the worst. This is JD Star.